Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, the 26th day of May, 2014. Can you believe we're about to be halfway in the middle of next month into 2015? I mean, it's like we're in an acceleration machine into the future, but I guess we are as we approach the singularity. All right, you're going to hear lots of radio shows today just worshiping veterans, worshiping um, wounded vets, uh, maybe even some charities to try to get them prosthesis and things. But you're not going to hear a lot out there about how there's a long tradition in ancient Rome and continental Europe and then, of course, here in the United States of treating veterans like trash after you're done with them. Because the establishment wants troops to kill foreign enemies and take over land in imperial governments. They don't want you around afterwards because they're scared of you. You're like an old cannon that they've spiked because they don't want it being used. And that's what's unfolding. That's what's happening. We're going to premiere here on the radio in the next segment a seven-minute report by Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, Army veteran, uh, out at uh, the VA outside Austin, the new VA, where they admitted on tape with a hidden camera, sunglass camera, the, the police said, you can't be here because they had their cameras openly out. Uh, you, you've got to go because of the VA scandal. So that is going to be coming up uh, here on the radio transmission. The video of that today on this Monday edition will be posted up on InfoWars.com. So if you're a radio listener, you can go there and see it for yourself and follow along with the audio of that is coming up for radio listeners. Then Darren McBreen has another report on veterans of another type, NFL veterans. Many of former NFL veterans calling it a cult, that they were drugged with illegal drugs uh, before many games, and that's now coming out. Uh, yeah, when I played football, I didn't take them, but some of the other young people did. In high school, it was known that people were taking steroids and it was quietly being encouraged. That's what it's all about in the culture of winning in a state like Texas where it's the religion. So that's just some of the news coming up today. We'll review the latest breaking news on the VA scandal. And folks are asking, why hasn't anyone been fired yet? Well, I'll break that down at the start of the next segment as well. But I hope that you're all having a happy and safe Veterans Day. I want to attempt today to get people to think about really taking care of our veterans and not sending them to illegal wars and unconstitutional actions and then taking care of them once they get back here, uh, not listing them as public enemy number one as the Department of Homeland Security has done. And then, of course, I have solidarity with the vets, not that I'm one, but that then constitutionalists, libertarians, patriots, myself by name, Ron Paul and others are listed along with returning veterans as the number one enemy. They're listed as number one, but we're listed after that. So, so we're all in this together and we need to ask why. Well, most veterans don't trust the system. They know how they've been treated. They know the corruption they saw in the military. They know how corrupt these last wars were. And that's why you're on the chopping block, just like I am and everybody else is, who promotes liberty and stands for justice. And that's why we've got two in the words of Benjamin Franklin, all hang together or we will surely hang separate. And that is my message to you out there on this Memorial Day. As we go to break, I want to remind you last week, we took a lot of phone calls from active duty and, 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 and retired military veterans. And they said undoubtedly in the six years since Obama got in, and the last two years since Obamacare began to be phased in, the VA has gone from being a nightmare hit and miss situation to absolute death panel list, absolute hell. And I want to challenge all of those on MSNBC, CNN, all the White House run channels who are saying it's a conspiracy theory that there's any problems. Do you really want to sign on to something this evil, throwing veterans in the trash can? I guess we throw our babies in the trash can, 53 million of them, so... I guess it makes sense. It's all coming up as Jimi Hendrix, wasn't he a veteran? Takes us out here, ladies and gentlemen, on Memorial Day 2014. And we are joining you today with this original portion of the transmission. We've got some best of info coming up, but uh, here we are on Memorial Day. I want to thank the crew. 
CJ and others for being here to run the transmission today. Uh, we got a sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs report coming up in a minute that's pretty powerful, investigating the Austin VA that's under investigation for the death panels and more. But first off, CNN, who's right at the heart of all the White House cover-ups, asked the question last week, last Friday, VA scandal, why isn't anyone been fired yet? Or why hasn't anyone been fired yet? Well, that's because the VA has always been bad and they've always tried to put people on list and always try to put people on medication instead of surgeries or rehab. I have a lot of family that are vets. I've interviewed countless veterans groups. It's been a nightmare for a long time. That's no secret. But every vet that called in last week, we did this three or four days, to give us their report on the VA said since Obama's been in, it has gone from horrible to absolutely atrocious. Many times worse. And we've caught them with the death panel list that Newsweek promoted the case for killing Granny. We've had eyewitness reports on last week. The interviews are up on Infowars.com with senior whistleblowers that they talk about, well, we ought to just take all the old vets out and shoot them in the back of the head. There's this governing attitude of socialists that if we kill old people or kill vets or don't take care of them or abort 53 million babies, that that'll be more for us. No, the more people we have, the better a civilization we have. You go live in compact cities because there's more people and more jobs and more opportunity. You go out in the country, there's nobody around. The truth is most countries are not overpopulated. China and India are. If you don't have 2.1 children, there's not enough people to pay Social Security. America has 1.3 children. It's this culture of death. So the reason no one's been fired is because this is the orders coming down by the bean-counting socialists that are anti-human. And if you don't have a use, or if they don't have a use for you, then you need to die. We're going to skip this network break coming up because it's so important on Veterans Day. Now, let me go to Bill Gates in 2010, four years ago, admitting that Obamacare has a death panel, but you can't say that. That's a trade-off society is making because of very, very high medical costs and a lack of willingness to say, you know, is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient, would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade-off in medical costs? But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. Okay. So you... Of course. Well, we'll make now, let's let's go to press. What's the name? Bill Press, uh, the washed up CNN crossfire guy on MSNBC, the washed up MSNBC. Their normal shows, 100,000 viewers, top show, half mil. Local radio shows have bigger audiences than that in major cities like New York or Chicago or L.A. I mean, this is joke level. We have affiliates in the country that have shown 200,000 listeners over three hours. Places like Orlando. OK, so this is joke level, folks. This is a joke level network. Up there with the facade, a facade promoting a hoax and a facade, that it's a conspiracy theory. There's no problem at the VA. This guy's not a liberal. He's a monster pig. And, and, and Sharpton comes in and chimes in and agrees. These guys are fascist dirtbags in my view. Here it is. You know, let's remember, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is the law of the land. And the people who are ignoring the law are the governors who won't put Medicaid in their states or these House Republicans who tried to repeal it 54 times. This is just another big lie. But you know, in the conspiracies, you're right. They went after Obamacare. They were going to run on that this year. That ran out of gas because it's doing right. so well. So now they've turned to Benghazi. This is soon going to run out of gas. What's next? The VA, I'll bet you, that's what they're going to run on next. Well, they're trying to make the VA, it's conspiracy, it's fear-mongering. And, 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 and Joe, when they bring up, uh, as, as a former Vice President Cheney, he's skirting the law. The Affordable Care Act, as Bill said, is the law upheld by the Supreme Court. Well, that's yeah. enough. Yeah, the corrupt Supreme Court saying it's a tax. Yeah, to private banks that own the insurance companies that wrote it as a giant screw job. To line the pockets of government bureaucrats, to give government control over health care, to set up death panels, increase your health care costs while cutting the quality of care. That's why the Republican leadership is fighting to not repeal it and to, quote, only change it. Repeal it, you crooks. The Supreme Court Sharpton also ruled, what, 170-something years ago that black people weren't human. I say that's a fraud. 
Hitler had courts that did a bunch of stuff. I am, if the Supreme Court says I don't have a right to keep guns, they can go jump off a cliff. They can go fly a kite. Now, before I go any further into all these articles, we're skipping this network break coming up at 20 after on Veterans Day. Well, to me, it's Veterans Day. I mean, I always call it Veterans Day. I know it's Memorial Day. I know you have Patriots Day. What is that, the 15th? And then you have the other Patriots Day on the 19th. Like they celebrate in the Northeast Patriots Day on the 15th, but then it's really the 19th. Then there's Paul Revere Day. The point is, it's Memorial Day. For me, that's Veterans Day. Uh, but anyways, Freudian slip there. We're going to get to this report by a veteran, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, uh, of Iraq and Afghanistan, multiple Purple Hearts. Here he is trying to go to the VA. They see our cameras. They see the flag on our microphone. They say, you can't be here. You can't even get to your car. It's in the parking lot. You got to go. Because they'd already been in and out with their cameras. They were coming back. And the police admit, no media allowed here now that there's a scandal and an investigation. So here is his report premiering here on the radio for Memorial Day, a.k.a. Veterans Day. The most humbling part of my job is serving as commander-in-chief to the world's finest military. And there's nothing I take more seriously than my responsibility to those who sacrifice their own safety to defend ours. That's why Michelle and I have made supporting veterans and military families a top priority from the start. Well, as you can see, the president's number one priority is veteran care. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but President Obama, back in 2007, was on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and he still is. Well, I mean, the specific this. allegations that I think were reported first by your network out of Phoenix, I believe uh, we learned about them through uh, the reports. Uh, that's when we learned about them, and that's when, as I understand, Secretary Shinseki learned about them. Now, I find it hard to believe that Jay Carney says the president just now found out about this when it came out on the news. Hey, sir, you can't come on property. Okay, we're just going to get our vehicle then. Well, you... So we'll get our vehicle and leave them. We were just trying to, we're doing... Just stay off the property from me. I can't get my car? Yeah, this has been a fiasco. Media, we have so much media. Sir, with their, uh, they are with InfoWars, magazine, talk okay. show. Yeah. We're doing a report, that's why we're kind of standing out here, but we're doing stuff on veteran suicides mm -hmm. and how people think that they can help kind of fix it, that's all. Okay, so, yeah, but any media can't be done on property. Let me get your information if you don't mind, sir. I just got kicked off the VA in Austin Center by police. And all, all I said I was going to do was interview a few veterans walking through the parking lot and ask them a few questions about suicide awareness with veterans. And they said I couldn't be there on property because of the scandal going on right now. Now, this says a lot about our government. Instead of fixing the problem, they'd rather just sweep it under their mat and forget all about it. Today, I interviewed two soldiers who gave me their accounts of mistreatment at VA clinics. You said while you were in the service... You were, you know, drugged quite a bit by the military, you know, excessive amounts of painkillers that would get you, you know, over time, you would be addicted to things like that. You know, give me a little uh, background on that and what you experienced with the mass drugging. Oh, um, the mass drugging, uh, one of my duty stations after Fort Campbell, um, pretty much, I mean, you're in pain, they wrote your prescription. You're freaking going cuckoo or say you're feeling this way, this way, they wrote your prescription. It pretty much was just like, we'll write your prescription for this, we'll write your prescription for that. And um, there's people that I know that will attest that I was pretty much in a zombie-like state. They sent me to therapy when I was in Colorado. Uh, but the therapy they sent me to there was a civilian-run contractor. And at the civilian-run facility, they pretty much drugged me even more and more and more. So that necessarily wasn't the military's fault. That was just another facility's fault. Um, and when I got out of the Army, uh, my friends can attest for this, I was a train wreck. I literally was a train wreck, a zombie, uh, hated life, hated everything, didn't know what I was going to do, and it was just awful. I mean, you thought people were kind of coming after you for a bit of time there, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did. It's normal with PTSD to have some paranoia, which I, I still suffer with right now. But the amount of paranoia I was having at the time when I first got out was uh, ridiculous. I mean, I had friends stop talking to me because they thought that I was going nuts. Uh, the problem was that the uh, medication doctors there, they were, they were all about some pills. Just here, take this, you know, it, it'll maybe make you feel better or... It was nothing with side effects all the time. It drove me to do nothing but want to drink and 
pack on a bunch of weight and everything else. Just cause, I mean, all the side effects one had over the other. Well, what kind of pills did they give you? They give you antidepressants, you know, pain pills, things like that. When I first got out, they were giving me uh, tranquilizer. I mean, just sedatives, basically. It's supposed to make you happier, but in, in essence, for a lot of us, it just kind of seems like it, it makes you more depressed. You weren't even seeing, like, real doctors. It took me, I think, four months before I actually seen a, an actual psychologist um, and a counselor to help me with some of the, you know, the crap I was dealing with. And I got tired of it, and I ended up moving from Florida to Texas. So, um, and San Antonio really isn't any better. I, I ended up going there for... Um, I didn't know I had type 2 diabetes, and I ended up going there with a blood sugar of like 890-something. Uh, so the VA in Gainesville never even caught on to the fact that you had diabetes and you've gone an extended amount of time without even getting that taken care of? Yeah. They told me, you know, you're like, you were like a soda pop away from a coma. I mean, that's a prime example. I mean, you could have been on a secret list like the one in Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, that's scary to know that these guys could have known or did know and decided just to kind of let that slide and just, you know, whatever, you know, sort itself out over time. Over the past three days, I've had the opportunity to speak with four separate whistleblowers that worked at VA clinics across the nation. Now, they all had something interesting to add. They made statements, racial slurs against veterans have made statements that, you know, older veterans, they should just be taken outside and shot in the head because they're worthless. And this person still works there. One of the biggest issues with the VA care is the fact that we all know there's a rise in suicides and anxiety and depression. And instead of actually treating the underlying issues through new technologies, they just hand out pills. And they hand out so much medication at the VA that at the VA, pills have become a currency. And veterans get arrested or they get detained because it's federal property because they're just handed out these pills. I mean, I could go, I have a back problem. I could go to the VA right now and probably get a three-month supply of Vicodin. In the private industry, that won't happen. And I really believe that they rely on veterans being addicted because they go to what's called the addiction clinic where they receive funding per head. Is there a reason that a lot of these VA clinics, and I don't know if, if this trickles to you at all, but I, I keep getting reports from a lot of the veterans saying that when they go in and they have problems, they're being asked if they have weapons, how much ammo they have, and where they store them at. Now, is that something that is a across-the-board type question? Not, not specifically whether they have weapons in the house, uh, that sort of thing. But, you know, not to open up a, another can of worms, but, you know, there's been issues in the past where if, if a doctor feels that a veteran is rated incompetent, um, without that due process, you know, we would send them a letter basically saying that, yeah, you're not allowed to own weapons or, uh, you know, it, against it's against the Brady Bill or the Brady Law. You have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. Mainstream media is not going to do their job covering this story whatsoever. So it's our job here at InfoWars to get the story out. If you have any tips or anything like that, please email them to vets at InfoWars.com. And don't forget, our oath to the Constitution has no expiration date. All right, good job, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, with that report. And there was a little clip there from Fox News with a SWAT team commander in a small town in Indiana uh, last week. Story had a lot of attention. Drudge Report linked to it. Uh, InfoWars.com had it. DrudgeReport.com had it. And they just say, no, we need armored vehicles from Iraq to fight the vets because there's such a rash of crime from them when actually the crime's gone down. Violent crime uh, has gone down 52% uh, since 1992, just department's own numbers, and the vets aren't doing anything, really. So it's just pure demonization with no facts. So know that. They've got all these ads, join the military. They've got all this, oh, let's thank the veterans of the football game everywhere. That's all window dressing to, A, make everybody feel good about themselves, all the vets are being thrown in the trash can like aborted babies. And B, it's about sucking young people in to want to be honorable and serve in the military. Our country's been occupied by the globalist. Our military openly works for the new world order. And that's what's happening. Now, the good news is the most awake group I run into is the veterans. So on Memorial Day, I want to salute all the veterans and all the dead veterans, the, the, the fallen veterans, people like my grandfathers and my uncle 
and great uncles and so many others who were good men and, and who believed they were fighting for good. Certainly my grandfathers were fighting Hitler. He was bad. Uh, both of them in the Army Air Corps. You know, my uncle went to Vietnam and uh, the communists were evil, but so was the globalists running America. But they fought because they thought they were doing a good job. So we salute all of those veterans and we do thank veterans for the service they've done because they believe they were doing the right thing. But now the globalists are trying to put you on drugs, list you as PTSD, to take your rights away, to institutionalize you, to demonize you. And we've got disgusting people like Al Sharpton and Bill Press on MSNBC who make me want to throw up saying it's a conspiracy theory, nothing's going on because they represent the bureaucrats and all the lazy people in the system that are trying to stop the good people in the system the whistleblowers that are trying to make sure our veterans aren't treated like crud. There are death panels. This is socialism. They have death panels and waiting lists, a year and a half for brain surgery for tumors that will kill you in a month in England, but are operable. Welcome to the new world order. And we see this across the country. 70 plus percent of foster children are on more than seven psychotropic drugs. That's been exposed. Any group that the government has clutches on is treated like crud. Look at the NFL. It's state-run, basically, tax-exempt. Sure, the players get paid a lot. Some of the top ones do, but on average, the low-level ones are treated like total garbage and hung out to dry afterwards and given illegal drugs, just like the veterans of our military. But at least they make millions of dollars. Here's Darren McBreen's report from InfoWars Nightly News I thought was interesting. NFL veterans treated like crud, NFL New World Order conspiracy, and then we'll be back with more after the break. A group of more than 500 retired pro football players have filed a class action lawsuit against the NFL. They are claiming that the league unethically supplied them with illegal prescription pain medications so they could play the game through serious injuries. As a result, these players now suffer from addiction and long-term health problems caused by the risky narcotics. The abusive practice by the NFL basically substituted pain medication for medical care, thus keeping the league's tsunami of dollars flowing. Players were sent out onto the football field unaware they had serious injuries. Super Bowl champion quarterback Jim McMahon says team doctors never told him he had a broken neck. They just fed him more pain pills. And his teammate Keith Van Horn says he played an entire season with a broken leg while on a steady diet of painkillers. The class action lawsuit follows another NFL conspiracy to cover up the dangers of concussions which was the focus of League of Denial, a powerful PBS frontline documentary that details how the NFL covered up the concussion crisis. What League of Denial is about is about the invisible disease attacking the brains of football players. It's according to the scientists we talked to, the cumulative effect of maybe as many as 1,500 hits a year, the likelihood that your brain has a lot of damage done to it is uh, very high. ESPN was so alarmed by the film that they ended their production partnership with PBS for running it. Meanwhile, the NFL agreed to pay close to $800 million in lawsuits accusing the league of concealing the risk of head injuries. And as we've been reporting all along here at InfoWars, the National Football League has also emerged as an establishment political tool. So it makes sense that they cover up scandals and deal drugs. And get this, the NFL is a $9 billion a year business and growing, yet they are totally tax free. That's right, they do not pay a dime in taxes. The owners consist of a group of billionaires who buy politicians who agree to use your tax dollars to build lavish stadiums that are also set up as FEMA relocation camps in the event of an emergency or civil unrest. Hey, we're here in Denver, Colorado, and we're covering Operation Mountain Guardian. Now, this is a large-scale terrorism drill, and 100 different agencies actually took part in the exercise. Now, this was a test for Homeland Security and FEMA to test their capabilities in what they referred to as a catastrophic situation involving a terrorist attack. One of the primary locations of the drill took place right behind me, 
at the uh, Sports Authority Field, where the exercise involved participants processing children in and out of the FEMA camp that they set up inside of the stadium. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has teamed up with the Department of Homeland Security, sending TSA Viper teams to football stadiums. They turn the Super Bowl into a police state, complete with Illuminati rituals while at the same time banning pro-Second Amendment ads and promoting Obamacare. They are the poster child for the New World Order, and they play a heavy hand in conditioning the public. And for those of you who think that it's completely harmless to be a die-hard football fan, like I used to be, and you honestly believe that you're not the subject of conditioning, you have to ask yourselves what it would be like to live in a country where people were as passionate about football as they were for things that actually matter. Tyranny is something that historically comes in a lot of different flavors and different packages, but on the inside, it's the same thing. It's groups that want total control and to run society who use the structure of government or any major system to expand a larger system of control. And it always targets the old government, especially if it was a liberty-based system, by one degree. If the old system was better in any way, they will go after it, and they will always go after and purge the veterans. And they'll purge the police when they're done as well. And we have a particularly virulent type of takeover happening right now. Thomas, then we'll go to Casey, Eric, Allen, and Michael. I'm in a hurry now. Finishing up your point, look, it's the vaccines. They had the anthrax shots in the mid-90s, and again in 2000 they were given folks that were killing base doctors that took it. So they had mutinies of doctors, and it wasn't really mutinies. The media called it that who said we're not given this so it brought attention to bioport and how deadly it was and then it was killing people uh same thing with the smallpox shot that killed some reporters that took it uh some national reporters one, one of them was nbc had a heart attack and that's what it can cause you to have is an autoimmune response in the heart valves this is stuff that is extremely experimental it doesn't protect you they admitted the anthrax shot didn't protect you and caused serious autoimmune disorders but it's everything else they're giving you Project Shad, the nerve gassing of troops, where they would kill troops, British and U.S., just in the, even in the 80s, and tell their families, oh, your husband died of the flu. They would even dissect their body, their bodies. So this is what's going on. You are seen as scum. You are seen as trash because the ruling elite are eugenicists. That's their attitude to begin with. All right, uh, let's go ahead and... Go back to your calls. Thomas, uh, do you think it's DU? Do you think it's the vaccines that's causing you to have all these health problems? Because you look statistically at the veterans. I mean, they are just in, in desperate straits, and then they can't get health care, as you said. It used to be bad. Now it's really bad. I guess you're supposed to go curl up and die. Do you have any idea what did it to you? I personally think it has to do with the GMOs and fluoride in the water. See, before I was ignorant to that, and I, I'm not going to lie, I ate very unhealthy. I lived at the Jack in the Box, and since I've cut that out of my life, I slowed down a lot. And I, no I notice if I'll go and eat some fast food or cheap GMO food, I get sick right afterwards. I, I, I feel it's an effect of our environment. And that's why. Oh, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'll be on the road sometimes, and all there is is a Wendy's or a Jack in the Box. And, and, and I go, I got to eat. And I eat a Jack in the Box and literally had what I call a panic attack an hour later. I never have stuff like that unless I eat it. Then you read what they're allowed to put in it. All these drugs that, you know, they call fillers, they're really psychoactive drugs that addict the general public. But if you haven't done it in a while, you know, it really hits you hard, just like any drug. And you're absolutely right that, that, that this is, listen, there's a London Telegraph article today about are you allergic to your cell phone? Because people are getting so sick around this stuff. Of course, and the fact is most people are getting soft killed, being sterilized by it and don't know because it takes 20 years. You ought to be glad you're so you know, probably allergic to this GMO uh, that uh, you know, your body's rejecting it. So that's, that's some good intel, good information. Thank you for the call. You know, the body gets overwhelmed too. It could be all the vaccines, the DU, you name it. Then it shows that when you're maxed out, then other stuff triggers allergies. People didn't used to be allergic to cedar. 
mountain cedar, mountain juniper. They didn't used to be allergic to peanuts, strawberries. I mean, the schools are like medical facilities now with all the special diets and bubble kids because they're, they're not being breastfed. They're not being brought up within an environment. They don't play outside anymore. They have their normal buffers. And then they're given all these vaccines. One flu shot. The Canadian government did the study five years ago during the H1N1. One flu shot cuts your immune system to the regular flu by 50%. One. Three flu shots doubles your chances of Alzheimer's. Don't believe me. Just search engine that term. How big a news story is that? We are being murdered. I've had multiple family members that got the Dalcon shield back in the 70s. I'm not going to say names or family will get mad. People very close to me. What they call it an IED, not an improvised explosive device, but an internal little device that goes around inside the uterus to keep you, uh, an IUD, that goes around and keeps you from ever forming and, and being able to have an egg attach. Creates continued inflammation. Turns out they knew when they approved that in the late 60s that they knew in clinical studies on humans, or people approved to be part of the study, that it caused endometriosis, destroyed the inner lining of the uterus, and caused massive infertility. And two people in my family that got that were sterilized by it. Turns out that Dow Chemical, in association with Monsanto, did not just have Agent Orange with what they called it weed killer, defoliant. They added a neurotoxin synthetic cobra poison. This was declassified about six years ago. Dr. Doug Rocky, former head of the DU program, broke it here. The document was declassified. No one was covering it. He said, have you seen this? We broke it here. Not bragging. I'm just saying it broke here. The document from the mid-60s where they added it, it was really a chemical weapon. A chemical weapon to actually nerve gas the Viet Cong and call it, call it just the dioxin defoliant, which is bad enough. It was neurotoxin. They added neurotoxin, and our troops were in it, and they knew it. I mean, I... The government is run by murdering total filth. The average social worker's not bad. The average cop's not bad. The average FBI agent's not bad. The average CIA person is not bad. I can tell you. But they're compartmentalized, ladies and gentlemen. And the people on top of this are pure evil. And take real enjoyment in hurting our veterans especially. Because they're getting rid of you. They don't need you anymore. They're moving to robots and drones. Autonomous vehicles. By 2025, there'll be no combat troops to speak of, folks, except for special operations. And they'll be there with robots. It's over if we don't stop them. You've been warned. This is real. This isn't sensational. Reality is sensational. The things I've seen, the things I've done personally are sensational. A lot of it I won't even tell you some of the stuff I know, folks, because people can't handle the truth. You want answers? To quote, of, what is that movie, A Few Good Men? Then we can pull that up online. You want answers? You can't handle the truth. And I'm telling you, folks, we're two minutes to midnight. The globalists think they're God. They're operating as an alien species. And I'm not saying they're real aliens. They call themselves a new breakaway species. They consider themselves to be God. And if you try to get in their way, there will be warfare. Well, let me tell you something. Hillary Clinton isn't God. Barack Obama isn't God. David Rockefeller isn't God. I happen to know about these people, their lives, what they stand for. They are narcissistic scum and the very last people to lead humanity. They are literally desecrating our human spirit, and they are the filth of the earth. Casey, then Eric, Allen, Barbara, Michael, everybody. Casey, thanks for holding her on the air, an Army vet. What is your take on the VA? What's your story? Well, the VA takes about six months to lift a finger to pick their own nose. So you can imagine what it takes them to do our files. So, and, and that's, that's the guys that actually get care. The, the guys that don't get care, they're, they're done. Um, 
And if we got time, I, I'd actually like to try and uh, wake you up. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay. Um, you're, you're always talking about, you know, we've got to do this and do that to, you know, get the right people in. How can we do that in a corrupt system? You're, uh, a chalkboard analogy would be perfect, or a white whiteboard analogy for, uh, for the younger listeners. At some point, you have to erase it. Now, just, so, just to cover your butt, no, I know, but generally when you erase something, the, the corruption's already there. It gets even worse. I'd like to work in the template of the Bill of Rights Constitution. But don't worry, they're probably going to start a civil war. And so everybody talking about violence, you're going to get your shot. I mean, it's going to be hell. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about violence. I, I don't want violence. I, I've, I, I'm an infantry veteran. I've spent two tours in Iraq, and it's... No, we don't want violence in the country. But... With as corrupt as the system is, the absolute minimum I see that we're going to be able to do to get our country back is to march on Washington and arrest every politician in every single branch of government, executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government. And we need to start all over with new patriotic people. Do you think all of them are guilty? Because the issue is they need to have trials. Even, yes, I, I agree. They all need to have trials, but we need to arrest every single one of them first, put them on trial, and then if the evidence is there, they need to be convicted. If the evidence is not there, then they need to be cleared of all charges and released. Well, I think, I mean, I think the idea of, uh, well, listen, I think the idea of an info war operation where we write up a treatise saying we know you're criminal, we know about the takeover, listing the UN running our military, listing the treaties, and say you have you know three months till this date. This is just hypothetical, folks. I'm not saying do this. I'm just brainstorming this, wargaming it. To either announce that you're with the republic and want to be part of a plan to reorganize the country again and kick out the Vichy French collaborators, basically is the analogy. Or you're going to be considered part of it. You send them a notice letter and you have everybody with petitions with millions on the whitehouse.gov and everyone sending thousands of letters per congressperson over and over again a day and going to Congress and going to their local office and making it a movement to say, traitor, traitor, traitor. You either admit we've been taken over by the Foreign Federal Reserve, you either denounce it and say you're going to kick the globalist out, or you're going to be considered part of it. I think they have to be put on notice that they are part of the criminal program and they need to, to declare where they stand. Because, I mean, what are we going to arrest? Walter Jones? Are we going to arrest Rand Paul? Are we going to arrest, uh, you know, Ted Cruz, Amash? Are we going to, I mean, you know, there's a lot of good people up there that are talking just like us, saying the globalists are scary, Obama's scary, we're going into a dictatorship. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just, that's the thing about revolutions. The globalists are revolutionaries. We're restorationists or counter-revolutionaries. That's what they call us, actually. They know we're the good guys. And so the danger of a revolution is most of the time you get something worse when you've overthrown the last system. Because, see, the last system is vestiges of the old republic that wasn't perfect, but light years better than globalism, with globalism overlaid. So it's a very sophisticated situation. And, and, and I'm glad we're debating it, but go ahead. Yeah, it's just, you, you just said uh, before you got me on, was that we're, we're two minutes to midnight. We are out of time. We don't have time to, you know, go through the, the bureaucratic red tape and get this done the way that it should be done. I hear you. I know. It's, it's really bad. That's... I mean, they're on TV saying communism's good and our kids belong to them. And every award show, they're having satanic ceremonies. And I'm living in a Twilight Zone movie. I mean, they're putting cancer viruses on all the major vaccines. They put fluoride in the water that brain damages people on record. They're just, they're just it's total crazy land. And, and what do you do when you're faced with an elite that is so evil and the public's so naive? I think the biggest thing is all the yuppies and sitcom watchers. We got to somehow reach out to them with banner hangs and stunts. And calling into talk radio and, you know, to all the talk show hosts that make fun of me, and I appreciate your call, sir. Great points.
I mean, I tune in sometimes to... to uh, you want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! That's what it comes down to. Maybe we should play that one more time. Because <laughs> I think it says it all for the general public. Answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! My issue is, is the public ready for the truth? I mean, this show is the truth, folks. We really know what we're talking about. We understand the enemy's operations. We know what makes them tick. And you either get what the enemy's saying and understand what we're facing, or we're going to lose everything. The globalists come from different elites that have merged together for thousands of years that have manipulated humans and have disdain for the public. You can't do the things they do to people and not have a hatred. Of, of, of the average man or woman. That's why they see the veterans as total dogs, as total scum. And then they want to lure young people into joining so they can chew up the best and brightest and use them to create this whole new world order. Let's go to uh, Alan and then Eric and then Michael and Barbara. Here on the air, Alan, Army vet as well. No other vets, just Army vets calling. Alan, what's your take on the VA? Yes, sir. Good to speak with you. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. Yeah, well, uh, I was stationed four years active duty out there in your backyard at uh, Fort Hood. And I'm 27 now, and I got out about three years ago, and I moved back home to Georgia and uh, went to the Atlanta VA. And I and when I heard, first heard the scandal, you know, if, and if you don't see, I don't know, you know, I didn't see anything like that personally because I got out of there. Um, but let me tell you, when you, it's creepy. When you pull in the parking lot there, you just get a feeling of how bad it is. And, uh, you know, luckily, you know, like I said, I'm 27. So for the younger guys, they can't just, you know, they can't just kill us. But man, you know, these Vietnam guys, the older generation, um, man, they're really sick in there. And it's like, you just see them. It's so bad. I felt so bad for them. And, uh, they're just struggling. And then the younger guys, um, like us, the ones that do get an appointment, as soon as they sit you down, um, first thing, let's ask you about your guns. Second thing, we want to go ahead and, uh, prescribe all the antipsychotics, uh, you know, things like that. So luckily I have, uh, I don't go there anymore. Well, stay there. I want to hear about this when we come back. Makes me hate these globalists so much. They are the most cowardly, degenerate filth on the planet. And they absolutely hate veterans. I want you to hear that, folks. They want you dead. You understand that? I'll be right back. People should go to veterans events that the media is covering tomorrow and make a scene about the VA and what they're doing and say, we're not going to let you just trot out the vets and, and act like America's great. America's occupied by globalists. And we're not going to let you use them anymore when you hate their stinking guts. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I mean, it'd be one thing if they were throwing the vets in the trash and treating them like crap. That makes me mad. But the, the grandstanding and how much they love them, and it's so sick. And the VA are just hell pits. It used to be bad. Now it is just, I mean, I talk to a lot of the guys that work here are veterans, and they just talk about how badly they're treated. And how there'll be an old man or something going, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. All like big guys going, to watch it, old man. You know, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm a tough guy, folks, but I mean, I would blow up if I saw stuff like that. And then we were just talking to Alan in Georgia. He was talking, we're going to go to Overdrive and talk to Michelle, Kathy, and Eric at least about how they ask about your guns. Yeah, what about those guns? You crazy? What you planning? And, and what they do to the vets, they're going to do to everybody else now. What they do to people in their clutches is, is a beta test for you and I. And I am sick of it. Um, so finish up your points, Alan. Well, yeah, a few more quick points, and then I know you got to take some other calls. I wasn't going to mention it. I was mainly talking about uh, when I got out, but I went to Iraq in 2006 and also 2008. And I want to say that I, uh, when I was on hold, I was listening to your other callers, and I'm also, and you're right, I, I'm very concerned about the number of shots uh that I had to take, and particularly the anthrax. 
I'm I'm concerned about future uh, possible you know health side effects from that. Um, it's pretty scary stuff. But yeah, going back to the VA, um, basically, yeah, if if you don't see the which uh, I mean you, you called it too. We you know we all kind of saw it coming when they first broke it. But if you don't see, of course they're going to be all over the country. But uh, I almost guarantee the Atlanta VA was also a part of this. And uh, real quick, you know, the bigger picture, I think you hit the nail on the head uh, these past few days. Um, of course, they're targeting veterans, you know, and the health care thing is bad enough, sir. But uh, that if people really knew that they took it, they were taking it a step further, like you uh, like you put on air um, and calling us domestic terrorists. That's just even more of a slap in the face. And I really appreciate you putting it out there. Um, because, the, you know, the only reason the VA healthcare scandal is on any mainstream media now is no thanks to them. It's thanks to you and then the other alternative media. Well, yeah, really. I mean, uh, we, we weren't really on top of the VA thing like everybody else. I've been on it for years, but it was alternative and libertarian and conservative radio that forced it out there. Uh, but to see Bill Press and Sharpton make jokes about it, I mean, I'm just sick of these people, man. Just because they have a lisping voice and pink ties. And, and act trendy and, are, and, and, and act effeminate doesn't mean that they're intellectual or good people. And I'm just sick of all of them. We're like ruled by a bunch of fake Nellies that behind the scenes are just raving evil demons. I appreciate you calling. God bless you. We're going to come back and jam in as many calls as we can in this little bit of overdrive. Please don't forget, I get so busy covering the news. I don't even plug the great products we have. We need you to become PrisonPlanet.tv members, the nightly news, share your passcode with friends and family. Eleven people can use the same username passcode simultaneously. That's InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. We also need you to go check out InfoWarsStore.com for the super high quality water filters discounted, the Life Straw, the Pro Pure G2 systems, 10% off promo code WATER. We've got the InfoWars Live products, a couple of them discounted right now in a special, the Super Mel Vitality and the Survival Shield Nascent Ionine. I cannot tell you what these products have done for my clarity, my energy, my libido, everything. It's, it's just been incredible. Experience it, take the challenge, and I know you'll continue to order it, which funds the operation. InfoWarsLife.com, PrisonPlanet.tv for the nightly news, 7 o'clock tonight, very to powerful. GCN. Overdrive coming up in one minute. Visit GCNlive.com today. Coming up, Leanne McAdoo went out on the streets of Austin and said, should the word fiesta be banned, should all Mexican food be banned? Universities are banning it everywhere, having Mexican fiesta parties and tacos, saying it's racist. I just thought it was a theme of a party, like you have a Hawaiian luau party. It's not because you hate Hawaiians, it's because it sounds fun. Then you go out and get all the little tiki torches and the little Hawaiian stuff to put on the drinks and the little pool parties. Is that against? Uh, I think we should ban it because if one person is offended that universities are having a fiesta parties, we should ban fiesta food stores that are across the Southwest. We should ban fiesta Texas. That's obviously racist. The word party is racist. This is 1984, where they're reducing the language down. And I see people on Infowars.com commenting this, going, look at these dumb liberals. A, they're not liberals. They're authoritarian fascists, control freaks, that want to control language. And B, they are just right in 1984, reducing everything down where you can't even communicate with anybody. And, and everything is a political faux pas so that you are just in a catatonic state of inaction, unable to do anything, thinking it's offensive. And I've told the stories of, of hearing people. Somebody says, hey, let's get Chinese food. Everybody's like, shh. At first, it's, you know, you don't call it the Orient. You call it Asia. You don't call it Asia. You call it the East. You know, you don't, you don't say African-American now. You say this. It's just all, eh, eh, how do I please, please you? Well, you turn your guns in. You pay more taxes to Warren Buffett. That's how you prove you're not racist. And you give money to Planned Parenthood to abort the minority babies to prove you're not racist. Okay? And, you know, you also are a Nazi collaborator like George Soros, a famous one. And then you get awards from the ADL. But if you fight the Nazis, the ADL will list you. Okay?
and the government will send white supremacists that are government controlled after you if you're Alex Jones. And then the Southern Poverty Law Center will imply you're a racist while they send the white supremacists after you who are proven to be government agents. And Arnold Schwarzenegger will dress up in Nazi outfits and wear death's head belts, Nazi belts, and say that he loves Hitler to Rolling Stone magazine and wants to be a dictator, and he'll get ADL awards. But, but if you make a movie about Christ and make one comment you're baited into about Jews, you'll be crucified. That's all political correctness is, ladies and gentlemen, is a weapon to control people and to end speech and to shut down the society. So that piece is coming up. Leanne McAdoo did another report. I think I'm going to have time to air. Leanne McAdoo, Child Sacrifice Goes Mainstream. We're going to air that report. We got Joel Gilbert coming up with a bunch of breaking news about his research across the true state of the country and what's happening with the economy. But we are going to, uh, again, come back to the next segment and get into the really big news of the continued attempted cover-up of what really happened uh, in Connecticut with the Sandy Hook shooting. Now, continuing uh, here with the news, very important article from the Financial Times of London, and, and, and that's even more important than the Wall Street Journal, in my opinion. This is a real elitist publication that openly calls for world government. But in this, they say hedge fund titans are testing the quality of U.S. democracy. If branches of government bow to big business, public policy will be decided by the highest bidder. Well, that's the plan. More money, more bribes, bigger bribes, more bribes and bigger bribes. And then it just goes on to break down how it's a revolving door with the big hedge funds, the hedge fund hyenas and the big investment banks literally just overthrowing the entire U.S. government. Well, they've done that in England as well. That's why all the billionaires, or record levels, are moving to London, because you can go there and incorporate and pay almost no taxes. But the average Brit pays some of the highest taxes in the world, not compared to France, but they're in the top, top bracket there of high taxes. But, but not the rich guys. They're not going to pay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have massive breaking news here dealing with the First Amendment in this country. If you look uh, at the situation in Connecticut with the Sandy Hook shootings that were used to collectively put guilt on the American people and imply that gun owners collectively had murdered a bunch of little children in an elementary school, you can see it was a psyop. It's come out that Bloomberg put out emails the day before saying get ready with our Twitter, with our media, to have a big push against guns the next 24 hours. Very suspicious. Then you've got the uh, local uh, regional SWAT team people hiding out in the woods in the same outfits as the supposed shooter. You've got the whole story changing. The most incriminating is you've got the helicopter footage of the, of the people uh, you know, with their hands up coming out of the school in, in, the, uh, in the evacuation hours after it supposedly happened, going in circles in and out of the school. Going in circles. They've torn down the school now. They've declared state secrets on the photos, the video, there's weird Anderson Cooper video where he claims he's there on the ground at the town square and he turns bigger than Dallas and it's a green screen. He's shimmering around the edges. His nose disappears. You can see flowers and things blowing in the wind and then they do it again. It's the same footage being looped behind him. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know what happened there. But I know Anderson Cooper is admittedly a member of the Central Intelligence Agency. And they send him out on the disinfo pieces. He's been caught three times in the last couple of years with fake massacre videos on CNN from Syria, fake shootings where they'll have the feed going, now I shoot, now I stage it, dragging dead bodies around. This is the stuff they do. So... We know they've been caught running false flags. The Turkish government's been caught staging attacks against itself. That's BBC run by the same globalists. So this is important. Well, a former state police officer who's run one of the largest and, and accredited uh, school safety drill systems, uh, school safety training centers, they go around consulting at universities, uh, you name it, big ones right here in Texas, but all over the country, this guy's got a long career, Wolfgang W. Halbig, uh, is executive director of the National Institute for School Workplace Safety. 
He's recently formed a new safety and security company, WK and Associates. Previously, he worked in public education as a teacher, dean, assistant principal, principal, director of an alternative school, the director for school safety and security of the Seminole County Public School District and school district for approximately 65,000 students. Mr. Halbig uh, has been in law enforcement experience, former state uh, police officer in Florida, a trooper, and the United States Customs Inspector. As a result of his unique background in both law enforcement and education, Mr. Halbig has been uh, invited to provide presentations and keynotes to a variety of audiences, including the National Education Law Conference, the National School Board Association, the Oklahoma School Board Association, the Illinois School Board Association, the New York State School Board Association, Florida School Board Association. I'm not going to go over the fact that he's consulted for 8,000 school districts worldwide, been on Good Morning America, NBC Dateline. He's not a kooky guy, and I, I, and I, I haven't asked him this, but I bet him asking questions the last year, just looking at it and studying, and I bet he's lost a lot of business with the system. But he doesn't care. I'm guessing that's... I'm, I know how the system works. I don't know that. I'll ask him that in a minute. But he's the exact type of expert witness you want who goes against his own interest monetarily to go out and tell the truth. Now, here's the bombshell news. This is in discovery.com. Newtown School Board shuts down conspiracy theorists. That's people that don't believe the official story of known liars. If you, if you believe you built your own business, and Obama says you're a conspiracy theorist. If you believe Obamacare is increasing premiums? You're a conspiracy theorist, even though it is. People, including myself, that complain to TSA about being groped, when you say, hey, your own studies say you haven't stopped one terrorist, they'll say, oh, a conspiracy theorist. Being informed, knowing how to read a book, knowing how to tie your shoelaces is a conspiracy theory. If you know that mother's milk helps grow children's brains much better, all the studies show it, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you think cell phones are increasing brain cancer and all the studies show it, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you're concerned, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, no, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, ladies and gentlemen. I am a skeptic of known liars. But in a world of universal deception and universal lies, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. To quote George Arwell, a.k.a. George Arwell, Eric Blair. So here's the headline, school board shuts down conspiracy theorists. Now, they've shot footage of this, and Wolfgang's making a documentary, but he said he'll send us the raw footage. As soon as it gets here, make copies on memory stick or whatever, we will get a special report out, because this needs to be seen, of them being shut down at the school board, then trying to go to United Way and others that famously suck up the Oklahoma City money, the 9-11 money for themselves, and give it to anti-gun groups. That's how this whole scam works. United Way, Red Cross, I mean, they're just vicious organizations. A lot of good people work for them and do good work, but back when I first covered this like 15 years ago, nobody believed me. They're well-known scamsters, basically uh, Democratic Party operations. But the bottom line here is that then the police blocked him from going in a public building that by law he's supposed to be allowed into. So Wolfgang joins us to cover what's happened to him currently, and now he's being blocked from investigating, He's been visited repeatedly by, quote, law enforcement telling him he better back off. They're acting scared to death, folks. Okay? They're acting scared to death about this big production they put on there. And the good news is the majority of people I see across the board and I meet do not believe any of this stuff anymore. Now, we'll get back into after he recaps what just happened. We will get back into his biggest questions concerning it. Uh, but Wolfgang, thanks for coming on. Back, Alex. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on. Go ahead. Well, you know, I really wish you could have gone on this trip. And uh, I think it's important that every listener uh, clearly understands that do I want to be doing this? Absolutely not. I'm retired. I mean, I got my AAP card. Had these police officers, had the homicide investigators not come to my home a week before Christmas, Newtown would have never heard of Wolfgang Halbig. Nobody would have ever heard of me because, you know, as a national school safety consultant, I simply was sending the FOIA request, Connecticut Freedom of Information request, asking simple questions that's not offensive to any of those parents who supposedly lost a child, not offensive to Danbury police or the Connecticut State Police. And to this day, they don't return phone calls. They refuse to respond to any, any Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. And when we're at the school board, you know, I had three minutes, I had a chance to talk to them. And I said, you know,
Mr. Chairman, you talk about honesty, that everybody's supposed to be honest here in this room. Where's the honesty? Why don't you return phone calls? Why can't you respond to simple FOIA requests? I mean, you're an educational institution. You're supposed to know how to communicate. And what really was important is that in March, Alex, in March, the Freedom of Information Commission out of Hartford, Connecticut, actually sent an instructor to Newtown, to Sandy Hook, to teach them on how to respond to FOIA requests, that they cannot ignore them, that if they are public documents, they need to be presented. I mean, they actually had somebody there before I got there to teach them how to do it and what they must do. And guess what? They're in defiance of him. They're not even listening to their own freedom commissioner. Unbelievable. And it is unbelievable. And, and, and we actually aired a few nights ago uh, on the InfoWars Nightly News the video of that transpiring. You're going to send us the video of going to the United Way and being blocked, uh, which you were telling us is illegal. We're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, but we do have that video and that special report. We will play your three minutes uh, coming up. But why do you think they're acting so desperate uh, to uh, block you and, and, and tell folks what happened at the United Way? Well, I think the reason they're not answering those questions because I think it's going to expose their whole scam. I mean, the questions, you know, they come from my background as a law enforcement officer and customs agent. I think you need to know when you have a security system, you should know who installed the security system. How much did you pay for it? What did you put in? I mean, you ought to have emails between the principal and the school district talking about work orders, talking about finance, transportation. I mean, it actually will tell you whether the school... There's no the history. Uh, there's no history. There's no nothing. There's no, yeah, there's, they don't want to respond. See, that's the whole thing. When you don't respond, it raises the red flag. And this has been going on for 11 months. And they don't even return a phone call. Me as a principal, Alex, I may not like you as a parent, but if you call me, I have a responsibility. I've got to call you back. This district, they just do whatever they want. Very suspicious. And when we come back, uh, I, I want you to recap for folks uh, as an investigator and as a school safety expert, uh, who's again been been sourced and used on CBS you know, News, you name it, uh, a leading national expert, you know, coming out and saying this doesn't fit. In the next six minute segment, Wolfgang, I want you to come back and explain to people. But 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 in thirty seconds, what's the biggest smoking gun that tells you this thing is staged? Well, it starts at the United Way, Western Connecticut. If there's one thing we learned about people in America is always follow the money. And I think when you look at the amount of money that has been poured into Sandy Hook and Newtown because of this incident, it all starts at the United Way, Western Connecticut, who actually, I mean, you saw it advertised three days before the shooting. They were looking to solicit money three days before the shooting. And I think the big red flag is the Connecticut Attorney General's report on his findings. We're going to talk about that, Wolfgang. Stay there. Yeah. And, and Bloomberg, this is in the news. He false started the day before as well. I mean, they were licking their lips. We'll be right back. This is hardcore information. This could bring them down, folks. Stay with us. School safety expert, former state trooper. Wolfgang W. Halbig has done what he said he'd do. He's gone to Connecticut to investigate Sandy Hook and all of the weird anomalies and just the, the clear fraud here and now the massive cover-up. So break down, sir, just to a layperson out there, the smoking guns of this and why you started investigating and why they're so desperate to try to intimidate you. Well, it goes it goes back as we ended the, uh, the break is that this is all about the money. I think it's all about the money. And what really caught my attention was the letters that were drafted, uh, that were actually written to two nonprofits called the United Way Western Connecticut and the Sandy Hook Promise Fund, which is a pass-through from the United Way Western Connecticut. And the Connecticut Attorney General, his name is George Jespin. I mean, I'm looking at his letter, and he really, really told them that 
that, you know, as fiduciaries, that they are accountable to the public and they must be transparent in every way since they're soliciting and they're recruiting funds from major corporations that they must be open, transparent. And also, he made a big note that if they are select, if they are uh, soliciting money under false pretenses, that they need to be very, very careful. I understand. We'll get into all the minutia of an investigator trying to get in. But why are you saying United Way is so important? I mean, what are the big smoking guns? Because I know you're inside this investigation. But for folks out there, what are the red flags? Well, the red flag is that you're looking at $29 million. You got the United Way, Sandy Hook Promise, and there are 39 other uh, community nonprofit organizations within Newtown uh, which received a lot of funds. For an example, the Animal Shelter in Newtown, Sandy Hook. Alex, they got $450,000 from the Sandy Hook shooting now what does an animal shelter have to do with this i understand shooting? you're saying the motive for the locals to go along with the fraud is money Absolutely. i get that i'm talking about the the crime scene itself recap that well the crime scene itself is you know it, it's just it's not the way we in law enforcement respond to any type of a shots fired or 911 calls it just does not make sense and i go back to the very beginning any listener i think the only way i think your listeners will understand whether they're grandparents parents guardians you have to actually actually close your eyes and pretend that you had a child at sandy hook that morning on december 14 2012. you really have to pretend that you heard on the news there were shots fired and all of a sudden your heart starts racing and you get to that school and all of a sudden you know that somebody says, oh, I think your little girl or little boy was shot and they might be seriously injured. And then you all of a sudden learn that nobody, somebody at that school did not bother to even order the trauma helicopters. I mean, that is unheard of. I don't care where you go in this country or around the world, you get the medical help, you get the best in the air as quick as possible. Bottom line, there was a stand down. Uh, and that, and, and you've, you've blueprinted all that out on your website, but I saw it happen. What about the kids going in circles back and forth, the same people, into the school for the helicopters? It looked like a fake drill. What about the guy in the woods that got picked up in the same outfit who was part of the anti-terror team? Uh, what about, I mean, just go through those points. Well, you know, okay, I, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me. I mean, I'm trying to stay focused just on the kids and not having trauma helicopters, and I cannot believe they didn't let paramedics or EMTs in. But you're talking about the people they actually caught in the woods. And you can hear the words even in the police recordings. They've got them pruned out. Alex, they got him handcuffed. One of the people actually is carrying a firearm. He's got a firearm that they caught in the woods. But do you think they would have run his name to the computer database? Do you think they would have run a 1028, 1029, check him through the NCIC computers to see if there's any outstanding warrants? Alex, we don't even see their names. Every person that was apprehended, handcuffed, taken in the police. The cover-up is the prima facie proof of the larger crime and that we're being lied to. Absolutely. I, you know what? I don't see it. You know, I wanted to say that at the board meeting, that if you go home tonight and you turn those lights out when you're about to go to sleep, how in the world can you live with this? There are so many lies there, and it's not just by the school board member. It's by the it's by the Danbury Police Department, Connecticut State Trooper. You know, if, when you read the police reports, that's not how we write police reports. Remember, each one of those reports, Alex, are taken under oath. They swore that this information. They so you're a top school safety expert, and 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 have been a customs official and a police officer. You know, bull when you see it. I don't have all that background. I know Bull when I see it. I mean, you got Anderson Cooper in green screens saying he's out there. I mean, this is it, it, the whole thing. And then you've got him jumping the gun. I mean, I think that's really big that Bloomberg was saying, get ready the day before, get ready to fundraise on mass shootings. You know, on your mark, get set, boom, pull the trigger too early. Had a false start, didn't you, Bloom me? We'll be right back. Stay with us. Oh, I share that dream that we judge people on what they stand for and who they are, not what color they are, where they came from. And I also have a dream that we not abort another 53 million, 54 million babies since Roe v. Wade and that we not kill 52% of black people. 
and especially because that is a genocide going on for every black person uh, that uh, is aborted. Uh, you've only you know got half the, as many white or Hispanic blacks are being targeted. And Dr. Alveda C. King joins us. She's got a new book coming out, King's Rules. She's going to come back on with us for a longer interview. Uh, in late June to get into her book that I look forward to reading. But in the 10 minutes we've got, thank you so much for coming on with us, Doctor. I'm so grateful to join you and your listening audience. It's just a blessing. Well, you've got 10 minutes. Let's get into the black genocide that's going on with abortion and, uh, you know, where Dr. King would have stood on that and uh, where all this is going and how we hopefully awaken America. Well, we know here in the 21st century, it's been on for a long time, but it was more of a secret in the 20th century and the 19th century, during the time of slavery, when slavery was abolished in America, there became a big question of what to do with the former slaves. Because they, we, as a people, had been oppressed, not allowed to read, not to be well-educated, and we were free labor for America. And so the abolitionists, after President Lincoln signed emancipation, the abolitionists would say that these are human beings and they should be treated fairly. And so there's been that ongoing struggle. You know the history of Jim Crow laws. You know the history of my uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the 20th century civil rights movement. Well, the eugenics movement led by people like Margaret Sanger, who founded Planned Parenthood. She was an affiliate of Adolf Hitler, who created that horrible uh, movement against the Jews, that Holocaust. So they were some patriarchs are working together. And their plan was to reduce the Negro population, which is now the American, American population. And one of the plans included sterilization and what was called birth control, which today is shots and pills and things like Depro-Provera, the HHS mandate in America, saying that you have to give free birth control to the needy. And, of course, with the African Americans being at the top of that list, to eliminate the birth of African Americans. And when African Americans do conceive, Planned Parenthood is as the leader, the largest abortion provider is saying, help them to abort those babies. So that's the short version of what eugenics and genocide has come to be in America. I work for Priest for Life as director of African American Outreach, and it is my mission to educate Americans and really people around the globe that eugenics and genocide still exist in America in the 21st century. Well, Obamacare funds abortion and tries to force uh, churches to pay for it. And uh, Obama's been a great poster child for increasing African, uh, basically forced abortions in Africa where they won't uh, let people on their own land and thing unless they have abortions. In China, they have forced abortions inside the Foxcom factories. Uh, but as long as they dress it up as liberal, it's okay. As long as they say it's the Democratic Party, it's okay. I, again, I don't romanticize the Republican Party, but the truth is they were the ones that created the NRA to arm uh, newly freed black slaves to protect themselves from the Klan. It was the Republicans that helped get the Civil Rights Act passed. I don't get how the Democrats have flipped history on its head and call anybody who's against black genocide racist. Well, that is really the quandary that we're having, calling evil good and, and calling good evil, and that is happening. And, and, and as you say, I don't really promote party politics. I say that you yes, should have people in both parties insisting that all the leaders do the right thing. I am a conservative, and I'm happy to be one. But I believe that liberals should also be uh, enlightened and know the truth. When you say that it is okay to kill a little person in the womb, it used to be you said you didn't know that was a human being, but those with pretty ultrasounds and science have just trumped that and proven that those are babies, are human beings. I bought that live when I was a young woman, and I ended up having two abortions and a miscarriage due to the harm to my body from the abortions and the harmful uh, fertility blockers that they call birth control. And so today I know that abortion kills babies and women. Uh, we've got uh, Lakeisha Reeves, uh, Lakeisha Wilson, Tanya Reeves, many African-American women who've been killed by abortion. Uh, Jennifer Morabelli, a Caucasian lady. There's a long list, a growing list of women who've been killed by abortion, slaughtered in abortion mills, and millions and millions of babies have been killed, about one-third of those babies, even though uh, African Americans make up about 13% of the population, but we are tricked into having about one-third of those abortions. And then we want the politicians want to say this is women's rights and reproductive rights, and there's a war on women that is trying to keep women from exercising.
exercising our reproductive rights. No, there is a war on women. And we see that war on women even most recently with the 300 little girls in Nigeria who were kidnapped, Christian girls and things like that. The war on women are, as you mentioned, in China, forcing the women to have abortions after one child. But we see that here on the war of our women, on the wombs of our women, with these women being slaughtered in the abortion mill. And Obamacare insisting that we give to women free birth control or access to birth control through our insurance policy. That birth control that is linked to breast cancer, cervical cancer, depression, high blood pressure, stroke, all of the chemical procedures uh, that are either surgical or oral or shot, that, uh, that birth control that you're insisting is not health care. It's death care. To give women these products that make the woman's body feel as though it is sick so it cannot conceive, and it's going to be linked to blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, um, heart attack. And they're not telling anybody about this. Did you see the woman who's an actress? who's an abortion counselor selling women on it in New Jersey, taking yeah. a picture of the baby and saying how much she gave birth. It was wonderful to, like, you know, kill the baby. I mean, what did yeah. you think of that? I've never seen anything that, that satanic. Was on, that was on YouTube. And see, what she did not do, she did not show her abortion. She showed a picture of her. She may not have really been having an abortion either. See, that could have been doctor. But she's showing, oh, this is pleasant, this is fine. Now I know I can at least get pregnant. They didn't show the baby being torn up, ripped up, torn apart, killed. They didn't admit that many times that once the babies are aborted, they ship the uh, remains of the babies to be burned as energy, the energy plant. You know, there's so much that's not being told to us, and it is satanic. There are many actresses, though, who have come forth and said that they really did regret their abortion. Uh, we have, I think, was it Australia? Is an actress somewhere recently that committed suicide because she could not get over her abortion. Oh, it's incredible. Dr. Elvita C. King uh, is our guest. She's a pastoral associate of Priest for Life, director, African-American outreach, priestforlife.org, an excellent site. She's got a new book coming out in just about two, three weeks, uh, King's Rules, that I hope to read and maybe even carry on our online store and get her back on. In the three or four minutes we've got left uh, with you, uh, I know, at least from what I've read, that MLK, again, I'm not saying Republicans are great, but he was more Republican than Democrat from what I knew. Uh, he was pro-life from what I knew. But then when I watch CNN or MSNBC, they use his image to act like he would be for socialism and abortion. Uh, you know, being his niece, being very close in the family, can, can you say what you believe Martin Luther King would, would be saying today uh, if MLK Jr. was alive? Well, in my book, it's King Rules, K-I-N-G. There's 10 rules, R-U-L-E-S, 10 rules that will help you, your family, and our nation to prosper. And there's a whole chapter on life in that book. Father Frank Pabone wrote the afterward. Uh, Congressman J.Q. Watson. So it's about what he did. So it's about what would Martin Luther King say today? It, well, there's a whole chapter on if, if Uncle ML, we call him ML, Uncle ML could tweet. There's a whole chapter on tweets, 140 characters of things that he would say if he were here today. Absolutely. Now, he was not a Republican. He was not a Democrat. His dad was a Republican, and today I'm a Republican. But Martin Luther King Jr., in his own words, said, I don't need to join either party because I might need to speak to people in those parties. So he was more like a Billy Graham or different pastors and preachers. We don't know what their uh, political persuasion is because when they go to their White House, but when they counsel these leaders, they want to do it from a position of the Bible, which is higher than any political party. So Martin Luther King Jr., in his own words, was an independent. Yes. He wrote that himself. Yeah. Well, listen, in the time we've got left, tell us about uh, the new book, when it's coming out, and uh, just your take on Obama. I mean, I think of him as the opposite of Martin Luther King. The way MSNBC and Al Sharpton try to invoke racial division uh, because they're busy stealing all of our futures, Obamacare, uh, raising taxes on poor people. What's your take on Obama? I just think it's amazing that people wanted to say that Obama was the realization of the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wanted a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ 
President Obama has actually said that America is no longer a Christian nation. And I know that my uncle would be very upset to hear that. Uh, my uncle was a man of God, and he loved the Lord, and he was a preacher of the gospel. Civil rights leader, yes, but definitely a preacher. He was not a politician. So we have to remember that President Obama is a politician. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man of God. And you can no more compare uh, President Obama to Martin Luther King Jr. than you can to Moses. Martin Luther King Jr. was more like Moses. And, uh, of course, President Obama is not. So I just hope that people will reexamine history and to know that Martin Luther King Jr. was pro-life. His wife, Coretta King, was pro-choice, just like Mrs. Barbara Bush and Mrs. Laura Bush are pro-choice. And think a woman should have the right to choose abortion, but... Her, their husbands do not. That was the truth of Martin Luther King Jr. He did not even go to the Margaret Sanger Awards program when he was offered that award. His wife went and accepted the award because she was pro it. Sure, so and people weren't as informed. Mm -hmm. And people weren't as informed, obviously, back in the 60s and things. We understand the larger eugenics program now, and you're a great voice exposing that. I've seen you on TV and heard you on radio, and now you've been here. Dr. Elvita C. King, thank you so much for coming on. I look forward uh, to talking to you coming up uh, in late June uh, to do a full interview on your book. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. God bless you. Guys, get her set up right now. Well, there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very exciting to be getting that lined up for a full 30-minute interview with her. Now, I'm going to go back to your phone calls on the subject of the police departments nationwide. This is in the documents. We have the articles, Infowars.com, training that veterans are what Homeland Security is for. Number one, enemy veterans. Number two, gun owners. Number three, Christian conservatives. Number and it just moves down from there. Pro-life advocates, you name it. And then Al-Qaeda is not even on that list. That is sensational news. So I've been harping on that a lot. We'll take your phone calls for the rest of this hour. Then the next hour, I've got to get to the latest Benghazi news, the latest Holder news, the latest China massing on the Vietnam border news, GOP uh, rollback school lunch programs, we're going to get to a ton of news, new NSA news. It's all coming up. But let's go out to break with the Soylent Green breakdown that dovetails with what uh, Mrs. King uh, was just talking about. Here it is. And then we will uh, come back after the break. Aborted babies incinerated to heat UK hospitals. Soylent Green, ladies and gentlemen, is made out of people. But now children are literally being passed through the furnace in order to fuel hospitals in the UK. They're being sacrificed on the altar of efficiency and prosperity. Next thing they'll be breeding is like cattle for food. You've got to tell them. Well, we are telling them, Chuck. Charlton Heston was a pro-gun, pro-life uh, activist, and of course he was a civil rights activist. About 10 years before it was cool, he was doing it in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, going to places in Alabama and Oklahoma where he was being death-threatened. That's why he's hated by Michael Moore, because he was a real liberal. Charlton Heston, a guy that I got a chance to talk to a few times on air, but also on the phone privately. He was so cool, man. He's just, I'm not a starstruck person, but Charlton Heston would spend like 25, 30 minutes on the phone with me, giving me pep talks. And I learned that he did that to a lot of other people. He cared so much. We'll be right back with your phone calls. A true veteran for liberty, Chuck Heston. Look, the globalists want to build this police state, in Infraguard, clergy response team, secret police, uh, Obama globalist army, whose main enemy is the American people, in silence. They want to just build it with no debate, deny it's there, the Emergency Centers Establishment Act, the Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program, all of this is real and public now. They just don't give you the details and the specifics of each facility. And I knew this one was special, so the guys have uh, confidently wandered right in, and we may have snuck underneath the giant's nose. My gut tells me they're watching the live feed, obviously, right now. Uh, as even admitted, the White House tunes into the show. Foreign governments do. And uh, they're leaving you alone because they realize making a scene and arresting you and making stuff up will only draw attention to the facility. 
So they are making the right move in their PSYOP. That's what the Deputy Secretary of the uh, Defense said a few months ago. They said, we've got to stop lying and be more, oh my gosh, there's the entrance, it looks like, to the underground facility. Okay, let's go to Biggs right now. Biggs, go ahead. All right, we're just walked over the overpass. As you can see, there's a... Uh a train track right here and it's starting to lead into an underground area so we're going to try to approach this and see what we can see from there yeah that looks uh well i don't i don't really know what to, how to describe it until we know exactly what's going on and it, it is very dark and it goes deep down in here so we're going to walk under here real quick and see what well, we, we can so far in we'll probably lose our feet <clears throat> but we'll try this looks like the beginning of a zombie movie you're about to find yeah, a bunch of canisters in there with a bunch of Hillary Clinton clones. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can handle that today. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. They're about to uh, go into the subterranean area. We don't know. I mean, that looks like a real train track that they've directed in there, but looks like they've cut some of the tracks and they just run into a wall. Yeah, look down. I mean, this has got an actual... This is real. Yeah. I mean, this is legit. This oh, yeah. is an actual switchboards and everything on here to be able to maneuver the train and, and is that tunnel open yeah it's wide open i'm gonna walk in here as long as i can hear you guys talking i know you'll be able to see everything so we're gonna cheap we're gonna go as far as we can all right well you guys do whatever you think's best if, if it disconnects uh but just go ahead and go down into that tunnel and find out what's there they could be walking right, directly into an underground base right now ladies and gentlemen there goes staff sergeant joe biggs with david knight in down the tunnel like gasoline all right well don't worry if it cuts out about coming back out go in and find out what's in there get hd video we'll find out all right their feed cut we'll come back to them in the next hour <laughs> that's pretty good radio huh and, and, and again i'm going to get even more great reporters like this that aren't cowards and then we're going to go out and just start covering everything folks our team is awesome thank god for them thank you and thank you all for your support. By the way, that's why you've got to go to InfoWarsLife.com, get the Super Mel Vitality, the Nation Iodine, the Lung Cleanse, the Fluoride Shield that cuts out the other toxins and, 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 and chelates. Uh, all of it, InfoWarsLife.com. That's how we're funding this operation. And we are sworn to defend the Republic. We are sworn to not pull punches and just tell it like it is and try to expose what's happening and cause a public debate about where this society is going. Because if we have a debate, we know people are going to say no. The best water filters, the best books, films, uh, patriot uh, literature, uh, preparedness, storable foods, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or 888-253-3139. And a lot of unusual items and in great shortwave radios at the very lowest price. You're going to find them anywhere. Crank ones, solar powered, you name it. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Or become a PrisonPlanet.tv member and share it with up to 11 people. So you can actually see the subscriber nightly news. So we have our own platform that can't be shut down as easily. We'll be right back with more from our guys on the front lines. Thank and, you for uh, pray for those guys GCN. inside uh, Fort AP Hill. Today. Stay with us. We're back live, ladies and gentlemen. In the third hour, this is a short five-minute segment, 18-minute segment coming up, then a six-minute segment. We're going to your calls right now for Dr. Nick Baggage. You guys all have questions and comments. He can comment on them. Jim in Maryland, you want to talk about the fact they're trying to get rid of our borders and then use the groups, I guess, as a political voting block. Well, I want to get Baggage's take on that. Go ahead and make your point. Yeah, hey, I just want to say something, Alex. Uh, this country is done. Um, the thing I don't understand is, is I grew up in this country, and you couldn't go to Japan and become Japanese. You couldn't go to China and be Chinese. But you can come to this country and become an American. And all these people, uh, I'm going to go back to what C.L. Bryant said about, you know, give somebody their comfort. They don't want freedom. They want their comfort. And they're taking all these things from us, not letting Alaska use the uh, resources there or the oils or whatever in this country. Why are we not back harder on these people? Dr. Baggage? Yeah, you know, you know, this idea of, um, of of no borders, you know, the fact is the cultures of the world are too different to erase borders. You know, we, we've got we got a couple hundred years to go before people are are really on the same on the same page. I, I just don't see that as a practical solution to anything. In fact, if you really it's easy for someone to come in comparably into the United States, go look into what it takes to give up your U.S. citizenship, you know, if you ever wanted to do it.
You can't without the government's permission. And now they're you know, saying they'll still it. take your after-tax money even if you do. They're kind of saying you can't. Oh, yeah, they'll take 20% on your way out the door in capital gains of everything you own. They'll, um, they will not let you leave for tax reasons, only for political reasons. And that way they can deny you entry in the future for those very political reasons that might cause you to. Uh, to rethink your citizenship. The fact is, it's not, you know, the, the U.S. owns us in that sense. We're not. No, that's what I was saying in, in the last sold. hour is that I don't even our family ranch. We don't really own that. No, no. I have some property outside of tax jurisdictions here in Alaska. In fact, outside of our organized boroughs. So it's it's property I really own, you know, because I'm not taxed on it. Wow, that's year. so rare. It is so rare, and Alaska is one of the few places where there are still unorganized regions of the state where you can actually achieve that. You know, and otherwise, you're really just on the uh, on the on the lifetime payment plan because when you're done paying the bank, you're still paying the government for land that you're theoretically um, owned. And they then they really can raise it. the property tax where you can't pay it. It's yep. so, so sick. Caller, great points. Thanks for holding. Carrie in Indiana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Hey. I've been trying to reach you for about a year. I've sent you about 100 emails. Well, brother, you're on the air right now. <clears throat> this seems to always happen. When somebody says they've been waiting a long time, I automatically know they're not going to talk. Sir, do you have something to say? Here, I'm here. Go ahead. You can look back through the emails, okay? Uh, uh, we are all moving right now through a magnetic field and leaving a trail, a traceable trail, and have been for at least the last thousand years. I know that sounds wild. It sounds crazy. You well, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you're talking to the guy that can answer that. I had, uh, you know, a big former bank capital analyst on. He said sunspots are what control economic cycles because, like the moon, it affects the brain. Uh, I'll hold you over so you can finish your comment, caller. So you say you've been waiting for years to get this out, but just say it. You don't have to like. People always call up and want to be screened on air, but. What do you think about this talk of this magnetic field in the galaxy? Is that true? You, you have tremendous impact by, uh, by these fields um, that are usually pretty subtle. Uh, I mean, the, the word lunatic comes from the lunar cycle, which was observed, you know, hundreds of years ago because at the full moon, people recognize there was a change in behaviors. When you look at um, the sunspot cycle, it correlates to the economic cycles. It correlates to wars. It also correlates uh, to major, um, major economic swings. That's what Harry Dent was saying. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. I mean, you can look historically at the record and you can make the correlations are really easy to make. The same thing is true um, when you look at uh, global warming. It's actually, if you look at the sunspot cycle, it parallels... Stay there, sir. I'm going to come back. I want you to finish. Okay, if you just joined us, we're taking calls, wildcard calls, just on different issues from Sue and Chad and Chris and Carrie, and that's it for the calls. We're Dr. Nick Baggage, we're going to talk about some more solutions, a really important solution that's verifiable to absolutely make the United States, but also the rest of the world, incredibly wealthy. So that's coming up, dealing with energy in just a few minutes after these calls with Dr. Nick Baggage, a scientist, best-selling author, one of the main land experts up in Alaska, and consults with native tribes all over the United States. His brother, obviously a U.S. senator, his dad a famous congressman. Uh, who got a lot of reforms in for Native Americans in Alaska, but also in other areas. And he joins us right now. But the caller said, Alex, I've been trying to get a hold of you for a year. And people just join us. I'm recapping it. It's the magnetic waves we're going through in space the last thousand years. It's different. And he didn't finish his point. He just kept pausing. And, and I said, no, we had uh, you know Harry Dent on, top analyst, saying that sunspot cycles with wars, economy, we're going out of one of the peaks right now. It's supposed to bring us down. we got the chart on screen for TV viewers. And Baggage is like, well, of course that's a big part of it. This is known by police departments, uh, the, the lunar cycle. It's, it's just known by hospitals. It's a reality uh, because, you know, the moon changes the tides, changes hormones, really affects women more in some studies I've seen. So finishing up with that, caller, what is your point, though, or a specific question for Baggage? Because he's a perfect guest to have on with the question, what what specifically are you talking about? An ion field? Um, what are you getting at, sir? Okay. In short, we are all moving through a magnetic field on an atom by atom basis. It's not wrapping around the Earth. We're moving through it 
point by point, atom by atom. And we have been for a thousand years, and with the right software and the right equipment, you can go back and you can see what really happened and hear what really happened. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm writing you. That's why I definitely didn't want to talk to you online. I'm scared to death, but I'm telling you that. And I mean, I mean, I mean what are you, an electro... Um I mean, you're some type of electrical engineer or physicist because that's the argument is that you can hear echoes of everything throughout time and space and, and, and read energy fields like electric, uh, you know, currents that have already passed through or radio telescopes. I mean, are you specifically working, say, for DARPA in research of this? Because I know they're looking at that. Or are you theoretically coming up with this in your mind and it's so exciting that you're freaking out? No, it, it explains everything. It explains. I asked you, sir, are you a scientist specifically that has equations or tests showing what you're saying? Oh, well, send me some information. I appreciate your call. Uh, Dr. Nick Begich, that's an interesting topic he brought up. Uh, and so bring it up, uh, you know, to speed with what you know. Well, this whole idea of being able to go back and read energy fields, um, I think that is an area that's that's certainly expanding in research and, and people's interest. Um, you know, think about how information is transmitted through wireless and reconfigured in, in television sets, as an example. The idea of, of capturing that information long, long after it's passed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would disagree with the caller in this sense. It's not a thousand years, it's for eternity. We are in an electromagnetic soup um, produced by all kinds of natural and now man-made phenomena. Radio frequency energy alone is 200 million times more now in the last hundred years because of what man's introduced on the planet Earth versus what nature normally was, was making available to us. But the difference between nature and man is man can create a situation where they can direct and control that information, which gets back to that earlier subject of manipulating the human brain and human mind and human emotions. This is where the science is going, and this is a very dangerous area. Exactly. If sunspots control wars and irrational exuberance and everything and increase them, then imagine what artificial systems are doing. Oh, yeah. And this idea of of the cell phone towers or any other electromagnetic system being used um, is, is extremely well known. We've been reporting on it um, since the first major articles, the one, uh, The Mind Has No Firewalls, 1998, Perimeters, U.S. Army War College. Great document. Everything in it is proving itself out. It's taken from an earlier Russian report. I know one of the best, the, in fact, the top biophysicist in Russia, um, Alex K. Varenin, and, and his ideas on this perfectly correlate with what the caller is suggesting in the sense that we can manipulate human beings to electromagnetic field. We just lost his Skype. Uh, atoms, molecules, and eventually body. All right, uh, your Skype came back in. Uh, and, and again, none of this technology is bad in of itself, but it's that the technocrats are clearly anti-human. When I look at federalization, globalization of curriculum, and they literally teach two plus two equals five, that is an attempt to really screw kids up and to make them dysfunctional. And for me, that's really a, a real benchmark. It, uh, it shows that the ruling elite are really bad people. And, and there's a mix of good people in the system as well. But the higher up you get, the more psychopathic, kleptocratic, disconnected from humanity they are. Do you disagree with that statement? I agree 100%. I mean, the thing is, is we don't need to teach kids what to think. We need to teach them how to think. Math, reading, basic skills, and then give them the tools to use their mind independent of the propaganda being packed in it in organized curriculum from around the country. Exactly. You know, I look at textbooks now. They are designed to not work and screw people up. And then it turns out we have the documents that that's on purpose. What type of elite wants to screw people up? People who want factory work and slaves. People who want people to lay down in the street and give up. People who don't want us to think for ourselves. You know, that's the whole essence of what we are as human beings. We are independent, 
souls created in the image of a creator. That means a lot. That means every one of us has incredible potency as individuals when we activate the mind to be controlled by ourselves. This is the essence that they that they they resist the most. All the mind control work that the government did, the thing they found out that scared the heck out of them is when they realized that every single human being had this innate potential. And the way to suppress that potential is to keep people in an environment of fear, confusion, and worry. And that feeling weak, feeling hopeless. And insecure, that's what Madison Avenue does. I had uh, Bruce Fine, top constitutional lawyer, former head lawyer for the FCC on, who got rid of the Fairness Doctrine. And he said, look, Alex, what you got to understand is when they attack us, and I've always known this, but when they try to suppress us, that causes innovation. That ca and I was realizing if we, the enemy attacking us and doing this mind control, that's what my dad has always said, but it's only clicking now how right these men are that are older than me that it's going to go in ways they don't know. It's going to trigger us to be even greater. Now, for the general public, it's going to annihilate them and hurt a lot of people, and we don't like that. But for some of us, it's going to trigger the type of historical, tr physical, but also cultural mutations that the establishment's not going to be able to deal with. Oh, that's that's exactly it. We did a Mind Effects um, closed conference on this uh, in Dallas some years ago with the best in the world. And what they said is we are on the edge of the next evolution of the human mind, where we're going to have these anomalous capabilities and the elite, the new world order, they are not going to be able to touch us. That's coming. That's the real revolution, and that's what they're fighting against. That's what mind control is really about, is shutting down our capacity to reach our sure. higher capacities. Well, that's I've interviewed what... General Stubblebine, the head of uh, you know, men who stare at goats. They made a joke out of it. But they're on record, what's been declassified, is the problem was they would boost all these people and get them to this higher level, and then they automatically wanted to fight the system. I mean, that's the issue. You boost somebody... Like they're going to boost their own people to fight us. Once they boost them, they're going to be at our level or higher and, and, and be more human and not want to hurt people. That's exactly right. And I think this is, um, again, when you start to look at these programs now drifting towards how do you wipe out memory? How do you really start to refine what the feed is? And that's really what's going on. It's a control of the feed and um, to try and suppress these higher ordered uh, capacities at the same time as exploit them. And that's that's the challenge for DARPA, and it's the it's it's really we need to let go of fear and worry, be confident human beings, recognize what we are. We live eternally. This is a stop between short interviews. We need to move forward as sovereign individuals, doing the things that we believe are right and true to the extent that we each individually can. That's what changes the world. That's why talk radio is powerful. It reminds us that we are not in this alone. We are in this together. We can make a difference. Wow, powerful interview, amazing. I'm gonna skip this network break. It's so important. Uh, we have this clip of this physicist, uh, Sneed, and uh, a Seed, and uh, what's his full name? I forget it. That's right, Richard Seed, and then this was on Discovery Channel. And, and, and this is the attitude of Ray Kurzweil and so many others. And they're really smart men, and I admire much of their work and their inventions. But the compendium of the futurists they put on TV, that they make the head of Google uh, technology and, and future programs, they have this attitude of, you're not even people, we're going to become gods, we're going to brush you aside. Well, I don't think they're ever going to become even superhuman or advanced to the next level while having an attitude of shutting off other people. I mean, you reap what you sow, it's a universal law, karma, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how these guys are so smart Then they have this real anti-human uh, attitude uh, of me, 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 mine, mine, mine. Let's go ahead and play this clip. We are going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, you're going to have big trouble. And we'll have warfare. So there's the attitude. They've seized the future. They're deciding what to do. We don't even count. That's the end of my free will. Don't they know that that is at a fundamental level a universal crime in the universe? You know, I, I think there's ego is so big on the part of some of these players. Um, and that's what I see as I meet many, many uh, people in leadership. They either have a very humble heart or just the opposite. And, you know, and I, I think eventually 
this all catches up. And, and I think we're in that in that phase of history. You know, there's a lot of unrest in the country right now, in the world right now. Um, that's actually feeding, I think, the, the changes that are coming too. And it's ne- the necessity of, uh, of another jump in, in human thinking and our ability to think um, is certainly there. I mean, consider what we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis as human beings. It's the inevitable next step. Um, I think we're going to open the door to a lot of possibilities in the course of this, but it's going to be a rough road. These um, elitists that think it belongs to them, that's been the problem uh, for at least a couple thousand years, suppressing the population so that we don't recognize what we truly are. What we're rec- If we could just recognize and remember uh, the gifts that we have uh, within us and, and, and believe that we can manifest those gifts. Absolutely. Come. And I believe the technology will lay the blueprint where our belief systems will change and we'll see these things naturally manifest in the minds of man. And instead of trying to suppress the general population where there's guaranteed individuals that would take us to the next level, I mean, the elite should see the entire population as a treasure trove instead of a detriment. And then the self-fulfilling prophecy that we're junk, they program us with junk so they can point at us and say, see, we're better than them. That's not elitist. That's not what a real elite would think. Uh, it just makes no sense. Well, you know, again, it, it, it's they fail to recognize uh, the value of, of each human being. And, you know, and it, some countries don't don't put any value on, on, on humankind. And what we're seeing is more and more of that drifting into into Western uh, governments to the point where we're just numbers on a on a tax record. You know, we're chattel uh, on so many levels. But that is not who we are. We are way more than that. We are powerful individuals capable of creating change within our neighborhoods and our communities. Do what you can. Don't take on some impossible task as individuals. Take on the one that you absolutely know you can do, whether it's these issues or other issues, and that's how change happens. Put people's feet to the fire, confront the issues, provide the information. That's the only way we're gonna see the mindset change from this defeatist, attitude. We need to rise up out of the ashes of our apathy, claim our birthright, and change the world. That's what we're each called to do. That's what we're here to do. And we can do it in every way, in every which way, with every small and large thing that each of us engage in. We don't have to wait for a group to form. No, that's right. And if you read the the three or four books written by Brzezinski on this, who is one of the top global strategists, he's in the top five that we know of, that's all they talk about openly, knowing the public doesn't read their books, is you know, the human potential is too powerful. They're going to take over, and then we won't control the future and the life extension technologies. Hurry, let's dumb them all down. Obviously, these are not the people to lead us, that no. they would act like this. Absolutely. And and again, you know, good leaders keep getting taken out. They either die in plane crashes. Uh, they get taken out in political scandal. Uh, you know, this is the way it's done. You know, you either play ball or they try and bury you. Uh, this is the way it happens. You know, here in Alaska, they're going to spend probably $20 million on a Senate race. You know, there's only a couple hundred thousand votes that are going to decide that race here. There, there's only 700,000 people even live in this state. But they're going to spend $20 million bucks, And you know where that money's coming from? It's not coming from citizens who live here. It's coming from big multinational special interests that want to drive the truck. They don't want to control politics. They want to own senators. They want to own representatives. They want to own this country and own the very soul of the nation. That's what needs to be stripped away. Don't listen to the media ads. Don't listen to the garbage. Dig into who these people are. Make your decisions based on real records and the things that are important to you. Whether you support the R's or the D's or the independents, find at least people that you can believe in and do something for them. That's the only way anything ever changes. And then hope they rotate out before they get corrupted, because unfortunately, over time, uh, that's inevitable uh, with so many politicians. They value the power more than they value the opportunity to serve. Well, and the elite know how to scare you slowly, uh, and then basically you get support and safety from joining one of the combines. That's what's happening on so many levels. Yeah, that's what's happening. Absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Chad in Tennessee. Thanks for holding. You're on the air with Dr. Nick Begich of EarthPulse.com. Hey, Alex. How you doing today? Good. Thank you for calling. Good. Hey, yes. Yeah, first time calling. I've been listening to you for about six months now. And uh, I tell you what, I've enjoyed every episode that you, you know, you put out. And I want, I want to thank you and the other patriots that, you know, do do what you do. And, uh, you know, it, it's a shame. I, uh, I posted a comment on Facebook a couple of weeks ago about how 
the United States has fallen under tyranny, you know, tyranny once again, you know, after almost 200 and some odd years, you know, years ago. And I got called a fool for this. Well, there's a lot of weak-minded people that are scared, so they just say that to make them feel big. They also have, on record, bots that respond now. Uh, they already have the CIA, already has major publications writing fake news with computers. So, sir, don't listen, don't even listen to the bots. They're getting rid of comments on most big news sites because usually the comments are pro-liberty. So they're trying to create a synthetic, artificial groupthink. Uh, Dr. Baggett, you want to comment on that? That's exactly it. You know, it, it again is about manipulation. So, you know, screening out and, uh, and and controlling the dialogue is what all that is about. I mean, it's the whole nature of, of, of our society right now. It's control the dialogue, control the debate, control the discussion. And every way that technology can support that, that's what's happening. Uh, the idea that people are giving up their private information through Internet, through all the electronic forms of information, that's our digital doorway. That's a doorway to our home. That's what should be protected. Um, we should own all of that information, not private industry. They yeah, I'm thinking we're going to start going to people's doors and knocking and going, mind if we come in and put cameras in your bathroom and watch you? They're going to like, get off my porch. We're going to say, hey, we apologize. It's for TV to illustrate that the NSA and corporations are watching everything you do. Why are you mad at me but not them when I'm being honest? Right. That's exactly right. And, and I wouldn't I would not. You know, I mean, I've taken a lot of criticism, believe me, and I know Alex has, too. You know, the fact is we all take a lot of criticism when you're doing what you believe in. Do it with respectfully. Do it kindly. Uh, do it with an honest heart. And, and if you're wrong somewhere along the line, admit it and move on. I'll be but humble. But, but exactly. Don't you get empowered, actually? Uh, when the establishment attacks you, it means you're doing good. I mean, when you know you're doing the right thing, people need to stop worrying about get, you know getting made fun of or attacked. That's what life's all about. Hey, it, you know, it's it's you know, being raised in a political family, you get pretty thick skin. I could care less what they say if I'm speaking my truth, and all of us can do the same. Don't be in fear. That's where they want you. That's when everything shuts down. Know what you are, who you are, and take that forward uh, into the world around you. Your sphere of influence, maybe your friends, maybe your family, maybe bigger than that. Exercise it. Do something. All of us are doing a little bit. It adds up in the long run. You know, this. The country is not lost, or we would we wouldn't be doing this. I would give it up if I listen. I'm lost. just some average guy from Texas, and I've had a big effect, and and, and I've got my problems, but I, I'm real, so it's had an effect. I want to. I know you got to go soon, but I'm going to come back and do five minutes on the big resource issue and, and really how to supercharge this country and the world just using Alaska by itself on record as the model with Dr. Nick Baggage. we got two minutes to break, though. Let's jam in a few more calls. Chris in Nevada, you're on the air with Dr. Nick Baggage. Go ahead. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, Chris is gone. Let's go to Jay in North Carolina. Jay, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Alex, uh, Dr. Uh I'm Jay Morrow from uh, Great Dogwood State in North Carolina. I tried contacting you uh, a couple of days ago by contact form. Um, I wanted to touch on basically uh, what the doctor was talking about as far as consciousness being upgraded. Um, I'm just going to hit it on the on the head like a you know hit it on the head like a nail uh, being hit with a hammer. Uh, basically, right now there exists some technology that has been used for. I, I say the early 90s, and it has basically been used to um, elevate those um, beneath the scenes behind closed doors. Um, but now it's a point where it needs to be known that this technology exists that uh, can reverse the DNA manipulation that the government and uh, the powers that be have been. Well, I know there's a lot of suppressed technology, but there's also a lot of people out there claiming they have things that they don't. I'm not saying you're doing that, but specifically, what is this? Um, basically, I um, have found myself to become a targeted individual after being discharged from the United States Navy in 2011 um, with all types of harassment, secret agents showing up. At oh, oh well, there's no doubt they're harassing veterans. I mean, that's in the news today up on Infowars.com. Um, I mean, they publicly admit that. So I'm going to come back and get Dr. Beggage's take on that. Thank you for the call, sir. And then we're going to get into some of the solutions uh, just on a resource-based front, okay, with Dr. Nick Baggage of EarthPulse.com. His books and videos are all available at InfoWarsStore.com or follow the links at InfoWars.com. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. It's the Live Friday edition. We're
There's a couple of articles, that's from Charlie Chaplin's famous speech, at The End of the Dictator, where he lampooned Adolf Hitler. Hitler reportedly had a hit put out on him, but it didn't come to fruition. Leaked document reveals Marine Corps Urban Training Center based on U.S. town, where they train to take on the American people. Another article, police now armed for war against returning veterans. In fact, I'm going to be covering that some on the Sunday show uh, with our returning reporters, Sergeant Joe Biggs, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs and David Knight, who just got back from an Army training facility, uh, which looked like it was set up for torture. That's what Biggs had seen in Afghanistan. He would deliver people for torture. Really a serious, uh, hardcore issue. Obviously, war turns people into, you know, turns countries into monsters. Dr. Begich, uh, in closing here, spend about five minutes on what you tried to get into earlier about freeing up federal lands, freeing up lands for natives, freeing up lands for states, the amount of minerals alone that can be easily and cleanly, from what I've seen, extracted from Alaska, uh, but is not being allowed. A, why do you think it's being suppressed? And then B, break down what this could do for our country. And, and I know we'll get emails or comments by different alternative energy websites going, Alex, we thought you were for alternative energy and you're a horrible person. Look, they're not letting us get those systems. We're trying to develop them. We're trying to deploy them. Everything the government pushes is kind of a patch or an act like they're doing it to actually control the industry. But we, we are based on minerals. We are based on oil and gas and all these other things we have. And, and, and this could be a boom for our country. Uh, so, so talk about it as a leading expert. Well, first of all, you know, we're not going to convert uh, from oil-based energy overnight. It's going to take decades. So these things are going to move forward. The United States is, has increased its oil and gas production dramatically um, from fracking and, and now what's going to be happening here in Alaska to the point where in a few years we're going to be a net exporter. Energy imports used to be about 50% of our trade deficit with the other half pretty much China. Uh, that's changing because of energy production locally within within the U.S. But taking it from the minerals perspective, you know, Alaska has um, a, a project that's uh, the Red Dog Mine, which is actually a native owned property um, and, a, and a joint venture of private industry. It produces 6% of the zinc concentrate in the world. We have one of the 10 top silver mines in Southeast Alaska, but we also have major finds of rare earth minerals, which are presently primarily controlled by the Chinese, but not in Alaska. We have uh, resources that are being drilled out and found throughout Southeast Alaska and some of the interior locations that could make America free in terms of rare earth, something we absolutely need to maintain competitiveness globally. We have no railroad link to Alaska, to the rest of the United States, to the, you know, we could hook up to the Trans-Canadian Railroad and start moving these bulk commodities out of Alaska for value added in the United States. We need the railroad links established to get these minerals to market. We can't just use ports. We have some of the largest mining projects in the country coming online in the next 10 years up here. We have the Don Donlin Creek mine. We have, um, the, the biggest one was Pebble, which has recently been sort of slowed down dramatically. Anglo-American pulled out. That's a half a trillion dollar mine, and they still don't know the perimeters of it. And that's gold and molybdenum. Again, Im important minerals you know, going forward. But Alaska has every strategic mineral in mineable quantities and strategically large quantities, world-class sizes here in Alaska, and they are not being developed for lack of infrastructure. You know, they're talking about you know, we need roads to the wilderness. We need roads to the mining areas. And, the, and we need infrastructure built in the same way that we built the Western United States. That kind of initiative would not only create domestic jobs, but actual jobs that result in private industry developments and the export of, of value-added minerals. This is where we can gain our independence again. We have trillions and trillions of cubic feet of natural gas, not including the, the other forms of hydrocarbons, um, frozen methane on the North Slope. We have enough to run the country on energy. In coal alone, we have 51% of all the known resources in the United States and 25% of the world's coal resources. We have enough coal to run the energy needs of the U.S. for two millennium, 2,000 years. And let me stop you right there because you're giving the solution. I've read that research. What you're saying is all publicly available. Your brother's the U.S. Senator. You've managed massive amounts of land there. Dad, a congressman, you know what you're talking about. 
But it's the same thing. America can't have jobs. We can't have factories. We can't even have service jobs. It's Agenda 21. Same thing in Western Europe and the U.S. We're not allowed to develop. We're only allowed to have government or corporate institutional jobs to capture us and enslave us under the UNESCO treaty. My right. issue is, why does the elite want to shut down the United States and Western Europe? Why is the elite putting in policies where the West is committing suicide and not having children? Why does the elite themselves, uh, pretty racist people, want to destroy the West? Well, I think there's really two reasons. One is the biggest money is being made in the developing world. I mean, think about a developed stock it's selling at $100 and it jumps to 110 You make 10% on it. Think of a penny stock going from a penny to a dollar. That's the third world. That's where they want the So money they want to shut government. down development here because they already totally have enslaved the third world. Right. And then if you look at it, they look at the U.S. mineral resource and, and base as a safety deposit box because they can leave this stuff undeveloped where they exploit everyone else in the world until they get thrown out or nationalized and then pull back into the United States and develop those resources at the point in which we're dumbed down and numbed down and then they can continue to I was told that by a high level elitist I've never heard that before except from you were you given that from your high level sources you know, that's the reality. I mean, just look at how it unfolds. Yeah, that's what everyone sees. If you really look at the bigger picture, it's just a shift in the market. They're just, they're going to go and exploit where they make the biggest margins and the least regulations where they can corrupt government that's openly corrupt. I mean, every one of these governments, even our own government, think about it. We have a government that takes money around the world on pallets and plane loads to bribe people. It's well known kidnap people, torture people, invade your mail, kick down your doors. You don't even know people about like this unless you're listening to this broadcast in prison. You know, the fact of the matter is, this is a criminal government, and they've done everything that the elite wants to restrict us, restrain us, and keep us down, because we can make the difference. We can make the difference in being the light that, that our founding fathers expected of us, not to be a dominant force in the world, but to be a light where people want to emulate what we have here, what we do here, in their own self-interest, not imposed upon them by some external force. And I want to quantify this. Uh, you know, one shipment was $12 billion, another 30 something million to Iraq. And they use it not just to buy off local officials, but to buy off our own military, where they would give a sergeant a hundred grand or somebody else a million, a general, and then say, by the way, you stole that money. You better do what we say and ship these drugs back. This is a corrupting. So instead of building something to rise in society that raises the whole society, if you're part of the criminal gang, right. uh, you, you get ahead. And it, 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 it's, it creates dark ages, folks. We need to be going the opposite direction. Let me ask you this. Are we turning the tide? I know there's a big awakening. Is it enough? What does your gut tell you the timeline is? What's going to happen? You're probably one of the smartest guys in general knowledge, Dr. Baggage. What do you see happening? I, I think it, I think the tide is rising, and I don't think it takes 51%. The you know, American Revolution started with 6% of the people, they say, were in favor of that when it began, and thank God there was that 6%. Today, with the ability to communicate globally, all of us, even in this broadcast right now, we can make a bigger difference if only 1% of us wake up and begin to act in what we believe to be right and true. It doesn't take a mass, it takes a few. There, there, are, there is way more um, uh, engaged right now than is necessary to create the next revolution, the next evolution in human thinking. That's what's going on right now. The tide will turn. We're not going to give up the fight. There are too many of us in it for too long, and there's too many of us coming up and be from behind. And I think that's the fifth column is the fifth column of freedom. It's those of us that still engage this process and refuse to lay down in, in front of the tank and get run over. We're going to take control of those tanks again. We're going to take control of this country and all, all of our countries because corruption is what needs to be snuffed out. The elite needs to be recognized for who they are and what they are and recognize that the change has to come, and it is coming. I believe the tide is turning. Just keep in the fight. Don't give up, even in the worst circumstances. Those are the things that give us the scar tissue to continue and the strength to carry on. Well, that's right. Beautifully said. Uh, again, we carry most of your books and videos. Folks can also find them on your site, which I'll give people. Are you working on anything new? What do you focus on this day over at earthpulse.com, Dr. Nick Baggage?
Well, we're working on a, a few things. A few of, um, of our electronic devices um, are coming out in the next few years. Um, we've got some really interesting things for uh, mineral and uh, vitamin deficiencies, diagnoses. We have some great things coming in the field of health, um, which is an area that I'm very interested in because strong bodies, strong minds. And I want to work with you on that. I want to work with you on that. You bet. In fact, I'm hoping to get down to Austin at some point and spend a little time with you personally. And I'm, I'm hoping to get down there sometime this fall. Come on down. You're welcome. We'll pay for your hotel, my friend. All right. Well, uh, bottom line, look at Obama, a false messiah. But it doesn't yep. work anymore. People wake up to these puppets faster and faster. And, you know, I complain that the public's dumbed down. Congress has as low as a 6% approval rating now. That's really got to worry the establishment. Oh, I think so, too. You know, uh, you're talking about the establishment. You know, we, we, I got to leave on one point. It's the Federal Reserve. And, you know, my brother's the only Democrat that signed on to audit the Federal Reserve. And when Bernanke called him and screamed at him over it, he said, hey, you internally audit yourself all the time. What are you worried about? They're worried. People are looking. It's not just about what's happening in the open media. People are paying. By the way, it's great your brother did that. Tell folks, because uh, I remember seeing that briefly in the news. Give us the inside scoop on that Federal Reserve situation. Well, you know, he doesn't trust them for good reason. They're not trustworthy. There's 300 banks or a private organization. They haven't been externally audited. They need to be. They need to be held accountable. They are jeopardizing everything in this country. And they're an outside institution with no audit in over 100 years. It's time. It's time for a review of what's going on. It's time for transparency, both within the government and with these quasi-government And your brother got yelled at by uh, outgoing head Bernanke? I didn't, I didn't know about that. Oh, it was a big one. I mean, he got into a big fight with Obama. Obama called him on the phone over gun rights. You know, Mark um, favors gun ownership. He doesn't believe we need any more laws to restrict gun ownership. He's one of the few Democrats that do. Before he ever ran, he told the Democratic leadership, you're wrong. You're wrong on development of Alaskan oil. You're wrong on gun control. You're wrong on net neutrality. You're flat wrong. And it, and, and it takes a different view. You know, Mark votes more with Republicans than any other senator. And the reason he does is because sometimes everybody has to recognize the other guy is right. And even if you disagree with some of Mark's politics, the fact of the matter is he does what he believes in. He's willing to do the fight. He's willing to take it on. It's for veterans, which was the last caller. He's on the Veterans Affairs Committee, holding their feet to the fire. And I can tell you, go look at the tapes of him in committees, and you're going to see him all over those guys, because veterans represent a major portion of our population and people who kept this country safe for the last 200 years. It's a different way of looking at politics. It's not all black and white. We need a politics that goes back to the fundamentals of recognizing that it's human beings we represent. It's the people we represent, and we can disagree vehemently about how to get to the solutions, but we need real solutions sure. by a more cooperative and responsive government. Absolutely. Thank you for all the time, Dr. Nick Baggage. Look forward to having you in studio as soon Thank as you, you want to come. Thank you for having me, and I, I just, God bless you, Alex, and bless your listening audience. You too. What a great guy. What a fabulous guy. I tell you, I read all that stuff in his books in the, in the 90s and in, in the 2000s. You will learn more in those books now than has even come out, and it's just... It's insane the amount of stuff that's going on. The admitted documents on human manipulation to suppress us. I mean, I'm the type of guy, if I see a lady walking outside, an old lady or a man, whatever, they fall down and hurt themselves, I don't laugh at that. And then I'll be around somebody and somebody will fall down and get hurt and people laugh and I look at that person and I go, man, you're really a jerk. And I, I just don't get off on people failing. Now, what I don't like is strong people trying to suppress me. I like seeing thugs fall. But that's normal instincts, ladies and gentlemen. And the globalists do not have our interest at heart. So anything they do is going to be bad. It makes me so angry. I talk about Warren Buffett constantly because he's the archetype of a guy that is the biggest recipient of U.S. taxpayer money alive individually. Look it up. McClatchy newspaper is one of the sources. And then he's on TV every time I turn it on lecturing on how taxes aren't high enough when he's an economist and knows full well you cut taxes and tax money increases going in.
and that tax cuts is what would get this economy going. They don't want it to get going. They want to shut it down. I told the story going to my uncle's funeral. I stopped with my son. I didn't take my daughters. At Luby's in Waco, some place I stopped many times going to see family in East Texas. And it was nothing but old women, age 65 to about 85 or 90. And it was a big line of these old women. It's all nothing but old women coming in there to eat lunch. I remember going to Luby's cafeteria since I was a little kid in Dallas. And none of those women could buy hardly any food, even though it wasn't that expensive. And they were all upset and they were all trying to just live and... It'd be one thing if we didn't have the resources that was going on, but the globalists have done that by screwing this economy over. And it's only the beginning of the poverty. And it made me mad. And I just know most of those old women watch TV and think Obama really wanted to get them free health care. I mean, it's the betrayal of weak people just really makes me feel angry. And maybe I was already emotional going to my uncle's funeral. But I just fundamentally got so upset. When I see cops pulling over some poor woman with three kids in the back, writing them tickets, the woman can't afford all the inspection and crap. The country going there, and I know they're going to write them tickets. It's going to ruin that woman's life. Then she won't even have a car to get to work. She'll go on welfare, and that's what they want. Not the cops. They're just there writing the ticket. It's just, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's just such an evil system. And I'm just not part of it. I got my own problems. But I'll tell you something right now. I'm not going to screw little people. It's never going to happen. Because the day I ever even think like that is the day that I don't need to be on the face of this planet. I don't enjoy hurting people. And our owners do. We'll be right back with the final segment. A couple phone calls and some key news straight ahead. We're promoting your freedom, our freedom. We're in this together. And we need your support. I have the best supplements out there. They've blown my socks off. You've heard the rave reviews, the Super Mill Vitality, the, the Fluoride Shield, the Survival Shield, the Lung Cleanse, all of it, InfoWarsLife.com. We've got a big sale going right now on multiple items. They're on the site, so please check it out this weekend. Please become a PrisonPlanet.tv member to see the nightly news and share a membership with up to 11 people who can watch the shows and archives and films simultaneously. So it's more than 11 memberships for the price of one because usually, you know, they're going to have 11 people using it all at once. Probably give it to 50 people. PrisonPlanet.tv, and I want to thank you all for your support and your prayers and spreading the word about the broadcast because if I'm going to lay my life on the line and go all out in this, I want to really win. I'm all in. I mean, I... I'm swinging for the fences here, and I'm, I'm weak. I do the best I can. Thanks for putting up with me. I'm trying hard, though. And, 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 and we need your support and to spread the word and to pray for us because the enemy does all sorts of stuff behind the scenes, and we know it's because we're effective, and we, you know, we appreciate the enemy letting us know we're hurting them. But we also appreciate you giving us the energy we need to rise up and strangle the enemy. I mean, I, believe me, folks, we need to be energized. We've been energized, but I can see we can go to the next level. And I, I promise you, I commit to you, cross my heart, like George Strait says, that I, I pledge to you to do all I can to make your, all your dreams come true, of freedom. Because my dreams are tied to your dreams. We're in this ship together, Spaceship Earth. And I'm committed to you. I'm committed to my family. I am committed to being a good person. I am committed to standing against evil. I am committed to not being a coward. I am committed to seeing this through. And if you will just commit to this, we will win. And it's the animating contest that separates us from the animals, ladies and gentlemen. I believe in humanity. I believe in you. You believe in us. And we will defeat the globalist. I want to thank all our friends and real media out there as well. I salute you and thank you for all you've done. Steve in Texas, thanks for holding. AP Hill, military topic. We're going to have those guys on Sunday in studio. Go ahead. Okay, real quick, Alex. Um, I'll try to make this real fast. Uh, there's a couple projects just um, outside of AP Hill at one of the facilities that's nearby, uh, Fort Pickett, actually. And there's a couple things that I saw or noticed that they're doing. One is they're building another thing that looks very similar to the AP Hill 
uh, training facility. It's an $8.8 million construction project. They're, they're going to have buildings, alleys, athletic fields, and all that. Um, another project that they're working on that I just found some articles on here, it's a $461 million training facility for U.S. diplomats. Yeah, they're just building facilities everywhere for the, the uh, domestic takeover. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was very interesting that they spend that much money to train government officials. Well, they just need to take more old ladies' houses, uh, and then they can do it. I appreciate your call. Great points. We'll look into it. David in Alaska, go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Al? Good, sir. Hey, uh, I've been waiting to get some information over to you here for a while. Uh, number one, first and foremost, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. Uh, I'm also a uh, certified anti-terror combat tactics instructor from our good friends over at the DHS. Uh, number two, uh, and, and second, most importantly, I am a, an oath keeper, and I have been since the day I ETF'd. Um, it came to my attention that you guys were uh, kind of chit-chatting and touching on some information about a mount, uh, what we refer to as as Mount Training Facility over yeah. in uh, Camp June. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I just wanted to kind of call and give you guys some information on there um, uh, about that facility. The facility has been built to mock uh, a very specific town um, that's in the northeastern portion of the United States. It's complete with uh, running water and electricity, street signs. Tell you what, I'm going to do written. some overdrive. Stay there. Don't hang up. I'm going to come right back to Dave, and we're going to have... Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs in studio this Sunday, you four to six, to with David Knight talking about Visit the secret armies being built for war with us. All right, stay there, stay there, sir. We'll come right back to you.